let's get into it. So, Corruption Daughter. Can we pull something nice out of the pack? Well, we got a shed. That is pretty freaking sweet. Unfortunately, we did not get much else. None of these other cards are really all that amazing. Spite, uh, Spite's not a bad card, but it's not very good in the early game. And Daughter is the class that dies the most in the early game. So, especially out of the first pack, we want to focus on early game stuff. Uh, this is not it. Uh, power Draw, pretty mediocre if you're not using Soul Tithe. Power Strike, very, very bad without Overcharge. And we don't even get a starting Void Stone for that chance at a purple. Maddening is probably the best card in this pack besides the Shed, and it's not that great, so... Really, just rolling any of these is probably fine. I guess I will roll the Power Draw. Okay, uh, hmm. That'll help, I guess. Really, we're looking for offense, not defense. But we can at least try and get some offense here. Could take a Null and Void. I think it's probably what we're going to go with. It's not particularly impressive, but... The Sift does help with the Void we're starting with. And it's, it's still relatively dense damage. Just not as good as a lot of the other options we're likely to find. But those are never guaranteed, so we'll take what we can get. Okay. Got a, a mime pretty early on here, huh? That's interesting. Okay. I see another shed. Flesh and blood is great. Diversion's really good. Uh, Dark Reflection would probably be nice, at least for a little while. We, we got a lot of pretty good stuff here. Curse Blade. Uh, this will be good as an early game finisher. Not something we really want to use in the long term, because the damage is going to fall off and the, uh, the Soul Tithe is not what we want. I'll even highlight Smash. I mean, honestly, I <laughs> there's so much stuff here that I'd be happy to pick up, right? Like... These are both pretty good as well. I t I'm just highlighting everything at this point. It's not really useful anymore, so let's let's put a stop to that, huh? It's a real shame about where this Raven's Gift is, though. Like, coming down like this to purge the starting void plus one we grab here would be really cool. But to do that, we either have to come down and up this way or we'd have to skip out on the Diversion and Potion Tile, and I like that. The Smash, I also really like. But, I mean, like, it's it's pretty good damage if you can get it, uh, get it upgraded, but it's gonna be hard to take advantage of the Rage, so I guess I can probably just skip on that. And the Separated Soul is a bit less useful since we have the Null and Void. Uh, obviously, 200 is a lot more than 125, but it's more. there's more variance because we might not draw this uh, at the right time. You know, if we draw this turn one versus an Elite, and we have to go all the way back around through the deck before we can play it, that's very bad. Or even just drawing it in the mid game when it's not killing, so you can't afford to set your corruption to zero, so. This way, we'll get a chest. We do have this really nasty uh, empty tiles thing going on here, though. This is 15 damage that we simply cannot avoid, so that sucks. We're also gonna have to skip the Curse Blade if we do this, but that's probably fine, because otherwise we're going to... Hmm. We could just try and, like, wait for this shrine. Skip the card pack? Hmm. This is getting kind of weird. This is getting really weird. Okay, so... What if we went up, and then we come down, and then we do this? How's, how, how's that look for a path? 
Yeah, diversion's great. But, man, the all the stuff I want is... There's a lot of it, and a lot of it conflicts. Hmm. This is a pretty decent path. After we pick up the extra void here, we do one, two, three, four fights, including both elites, which kind of stinks. But when we do it this way, we can grab the Cursed Blade, which will help a lot against this elite. We also have the option of dodging the Flesh and Blood to instead go, like, down this way and get the card pack, extra Shed. I haven't mentioned this at all yet, but the Shed, unfortunately, uh, that we got from our starting pack is not going to be nearly as good if we don't have good discard. And there's really nothing that's good discard here. So I do kind of really want this card pack, even though Flesh and Blood is also very tempting. Yeah, this 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 is probably the path I want to do. Uh, we only take 5 damage this way, which is really great. The biggest downside with this path, probably, is that Lost Diversion. We are getting a purple stone first. That'll be interesting if we wanted to put it in the power, or uh, put it in something and use power strike. But let's go ahead and just put that in. And I, I guess we'll put in a maddening and then a null and void. And this will just be the deck for now. Okay. Bit of an interesting start. Just go ahead and dump the void right away. I do not wish to mess around with that. Look how much damage they're dealing already. I'll just hold the wreath. How are you over the holidays, Divine Shield? Did you get a nice long break? just so little damage early on for this deck, man. At least we can kill this guy. I don't really want Void Coins, so we're just not going to bother. Hey, the losing! Thank you for the second month of your Prime subscription. Very much appreciated, and welcome to the stream, man. Hope you're having a good new year. Okay, um... So most of our unleashes are still in here. Like all of our damage cards are <laughs> still in here. Hmm. I guess we're holding a frickin' tower shield then. Excuse me one second. Whew. Okay, sorry. I might have to mute myself every now and then. My allergies are really acting up today for whatever reason. So if I go quiet randomly, you know why. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so if we want to block, we have to play the Tower Shield, which is really silly. I don't think we're ever getting this Null and Void up high enough to kill the Acolyte here. So we'll just have to settle for a uh, Enchantress kill. Might as well go after the one that's buffing. Still 13 next turn. We're going to have this for 9, so if we just gain a little bit more corruption, hitting him here will set up for a kill, so we'll do that. Yeah, if we if we lose this run, I'm going to do at least one or probably two more, who knows, I might even just go until I win with Daughter. We'll see what comes of it. Um... Let's see what the Maddening does here. Nice, okay, because it hits him, we can just Void Kiss, and that's the end of the fight. Cool! So far, this is like an okay start. It's not blowing me away, but it's not bad. Uh, Separated Soul here is going to be really handy versus the these two fights in particular, I'm thinking, right? Like, if we fight the the plant guy, I'm gonna be really happy I have Separated Soul. Garden of Woe? Or is that the... 
No, it's Greenhouse of Corruption. Yeah, Garden of Woe, I think, is like the leprechaun. Are leprechauns usually found in gardens, man? I don't know the, uh... I don't know, like, the mythology of it. Uh, probably do you just want to brush down the Hellmongrel here? Either that, or we could go after the Cinderhound uh, with the Unleashes, since they don't trigger his retaliation, but it's going to take too long for these to grow, I think, so... Yeah, Hellmongrel it is. That's so not worth it, dude. I'll just hold one shield. Yeah, thank you guys again for all the uh, the New Year's subscriptions, though. Very much appreciated. Okay. I uh, guess we should start with Void Kiss, in case we draw into okay, Curse Shield. These are not quite killing him yet, so let's go pitch one of those... We'll just play that out, and we'll play one purge one, I guess. That's a lot of damage next turn. We have this tower shield. That'll be a really nice bailout. This way he'll die to any source of damage now. If we don't draw the tower shield, there's just nothing to it. We take the damage, and that's that. Okay, we did draw the tower shield. Thank the lord. Uh, nothing really worth sending here. We'll just throw that out. We can take you out. And now we can just wipe you out as well with the separated soul. And he'll just run away. So I guess we're going to miss out on some Voidstone progress. Seems pretty unlikely we kill him with our corruption reset now. But we can at least get a little bit of damage in there. With the maddening. There we go. Little bit of extra void stone progress. <laughs> Gotta min-max this stuff. No easy task to win with daughter. Okay, so this upgrade is really important. We've got just a couple more upgrades on the whole floor, right? Like, there's one here, and then there's one more regardless of which path we take here. So, three total upgrades this floor. We have to spend them wisely. Currently, there's like five cards, <laughs> so already the ratio is totally out of whack. Uh, Void Kiss is always a very good upgrade, you'll hear me say that constantly. Uh, Tower Shield is a great upgrade. Um, Separated Soul going up to 100% additional damage. I mean, that's, that's like unheard of, you know. Normally you get like 25 extra corruption damage or like 50. Going up by 100 is massive and that could really help killing elites if we get good luck, which obviously is far from a guarantee. Um, and then otherwise in terms of stuff that we're going to pick up on the floor, the flesh and blood, if we grab that, will be a good upgrade. The purge effect on that thing is very strong. I think that we are going to go with the Separated Soul here, though. And we're just going to hope that this saves us from taking a, at least, like, one big hit from an Elite or something like that. Even if it's not the most reliable. I think it'll be worth ha Oh my god, Liquid Membrane? Wow, that's so sick. I will absolutely take that. What an amazing card to have. Or, excuse me, a relic. What an amazing relic to have. If only it worked on collapsing hallways, huh? There goes five of our health. That's fine. Can't afford any void stones here. Prices are too steep with tight pockets on. And speaking of void stones, we did also get uh, that purple stone during the last fight. Purple stone's really nice on Corruption Daughter, since often you're purging a lot of cards early on, which means you're wasting energy, because you'll hit, you'll hit the energy cap. So, boosting your max energy... Very, very useful. Uh, for now, we'll just put it in a Void Kiss. And we can see who we're fighting, these guys. So, based on that, do I want to play the Smash? Probably not. Probably not yet. If I had already something like the Flesh and Blood, then I'd be a lot more inclined to do so. But we don't. 
So I think we just leave the deck as is. Just gotta remember that we have our liquid membrane now. Oh, we drew both void kisses to start. Phenomenal. Uh, Divine Shield asks, does the membrane just allow for better planning? Kind of kicks the damage to the next round. Uh, yeah, so the, it's... This is... <laughs> not to toot my own horn here, because this was my creation, but it's a really interesting relic in that it has a lot of like little ways that you can take advantage of its effect, which come together to make a really, really powerful effect overall. Uh, it does allow for better planning, it allows for better efficiency as well, right? Like, if if I have uh, a curse shield in hand, which blocks for six, and there's, like, two damage on the stack, that's really inefficient, right? But I also don't want to just be taking two damage, you know, every turn or whatever, right? If I'm taking tiny hits like that constantly, it'll add up. Uh, with the liquid membrane, you don't have to do that. You can just wait until the damage reaches a significant threshold, and you're actually getting more value out of your block cards. It's really good on Enlightened or uh, with any delay block in general because uh, a lot of times with Enlightened you'll be playing a card that gives immediate block and delay block, but you really only want one of those two things. It's easy to get both of those going together uh, with Membrane, so more value there. And if uh, you float some damage into the next turn and then just win, it's basically blocking that damage for you. It does a lot of stuff. Uh, this, it's, it's actually powerful enough that it might be a candidate for a small nerf <laughs> in upcoming balance. Uh, we, we discussed previously dropping it down from 10 to 9, and maybe even 8, although that's kind of extreme. So, we'll see. Maybe it goes untouched. We'll have to check the stats and stuff, but, uh, it's, it's kind of crazy, especially on Enlightened. So, maybe give it a try next time they show it to you, and you might find that you like it. Anyway, that tangent aside, I should probably do this. Uh, we still got one in the deck. Unleash is only three, which is not very good. We'll just purge down and keep the wreath. Okay, Separated Soul is probably much too early right now. With all of our Void Kisses gone, again, I do not want Wreath Void Coins here. Another 13 block next turn, a lot of defense still in the deck, and the stupid Void. Okay. I don't know, man. Do I need to play this? These guys have the Blood Soaked ability. It's... So, killing this guy is, is going to put me in a really bad spot if I reset my corruption. Hey, Pegrax! What's up, man? Thank you for the raid! And welcome to all the Pegrax viewers. How are you guys doing today? Happy New Year to you all. You're joining us on a... Uh, towards the very start of a Corruption Daughter run. We like to play max difficulty Vault of the Void on this stream, so we've got all of these modifiers take them in it's pretty insane the nonsense we're dealing with right now and we're playing this uh corruption deck very slow so the early game is is always tough with this class but i'm hoping we'll be able to pull together a nice win i don't think i should keep the separated soul should i if i can if i can pick off one of these guys in one shot uh, after killing the Jinx Leprechaun. That'll be really good. Uh, normally I'd be more concerned about blocking here, but because we have this uh, liquid membrane, we don't need to worry about that as much. So I actually feel comfortable playing the Unleash here and holding the Separated Soul. This Relic, uh, I just went off on all, the whole tangent about this right before the raid. Uh, it's a very interesting one. Whenever you end your turn with 10 or less threat, the threat stack does not trigger... Very nifty. Yeah, thanks for the raid, Pegrax. Jupiter Hell, I have not heard about that one. I'll have to take a look at it. I have been... I've not found any new roguelikes for a little while that have been of interest to me, so... Definitely would be keen on finding some more. 
We got the Null and Void. We didn't draw the Void card from our deck. That's six. Now we can just dump it like that. Our Corruption goes up. We just need a little bit more and we can instant kill this guy. Uh, we're already at the threshold for Liquid Membrane, so I don't actually need to block. But I don't want to be inefficient with my energy here. I guess I don't really have a choice. So we'll just purge the Curse Shield there. This is enough to kill you. And we'll sift uh, just a curse shield, I guess. Notably, these guys get evasive, which says they cannot be the targets of attacks. Uh, Daughter has a lot of damage dealing abilities, so we can ignore the evasive. Um, so let's let's go after this one, and we'll get six random damage on you. You can see that 10 damage just sits there. It does not trigger, and it's going to continue to sit there. As long as I have the, the membrane, it's just going to never trigger until I have more than 10. And if I bring it down to 10 or less, it still will not trigger. Very handy. Unfortunately, though, this is what happens when you play Separated Soul. You end up with really <laughs> low damage output. And I don't want to get rid of the tower shield to the void coin here, so we're just kind of hanging on to this now. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and sift out another void. We have the tower shield for this purpose. Give me all the block I need, and we're just going to try and build up our corruption again. I'll play this for 10 and to get rid of the other... Void. Okay. Yeah, we just need to build up just a little bit more corruption. And then the separated soul will wipe him out. In fact, we are already there. Very nice. Now, the scary thing is that we're going to have to carry uh, the two voids we have into uh, the upcoming elite fights. We got two of those and a regular fight before we get to purge our void. So, it could be a little bit rough. We'll have to get a little bit lucky if we want to avoid damage. Upgrade-wise here, Dark Pulse is good for AoE, but that doesn't particularly help versus Elites. Those are single target fights. So I think I would rather upgrade Void Kisses. The Void Kiss upgrade going from draw and discard one to draw and discard two, really, really potent. Helps a lot building up Corruption because we have all of the uh, Unleashed Darknesses where we can discard them. We also have the Separated Soul, similar effect. And obviously we have a, a Shed as well that I'd like to put in the deck at some point. That'll give me a whole crap ton of block if I can discard lots of cards. And there's not a lot of discard options on the map right now. It's like Curse Blade, another Shed, a Flesh and Blood. Yeah, none of these cards discard, right? So we need to get the discard stuff where we can. And speaking of discard stuff, we've got a couple discard synergies here. Dark Conduit is going to be pretty inconsistent, but if we draw, for example, this Void Kiss that's been upgraded, this plus our spell instantly triggers the Conduit. And that's a lot of overcharge. We also have this uh, Power Strike, so we could try and combo those together. Uh, Phoenix Feather is good to have if we want a bunch of discard, or if we want a bunch of Void Coins, but we only currently have one card that generates Void Coins, and it's single use. And again, right, we don't have a lot of great ways to draw and discard, so it will actually be hard to take advantage of those Void Coins. The Seer's Eye, meanwhile, is just generally very strong. Uh, it lets you dodge the Goat Boys, <laughs> which is always nice. And Stealth every other turn is huge on a class as slow as Daughter. But it's inconsistent, right? Only every other turn. Let's determine if it would let us have stealth versus the boss here, right? It's every second battle. It doesn't start counting when you pick it up. So it would be no stealth, stealth, no stealth, stealth, no stealth, stealth. So if we take the bottom path here, it would give us stealth versus the boss. And the boss is the Skeleton King, who scales up pretty quickly, which is kind of scary. So I think I probably should go ahead and take the Seer's Eye here. Uh, it will also give us stealth versus this uh, elite, so that'll be really nice, too. Okay, just go ahead and get the voids out. Love to do that, and we'll play this for three extra corruption as well. 
Do I hold this cursed shield? If I don't draw a wreath, yeah, okay, we'll hold the cursed shield. Just want to try and be able to get our block down into that uh, 10 threshold, so any other one block card will get us there. Yeah, this is a prime example of why the membrane is so good, right? I get full value out of these, six block a piece. We're not overblocking at all. And then with eight left on the stack, I just don't have to waste an entire energy to uh, block some small amount of damage or something, right? I can just let it sit there. Very nice to have that as an option. I'm not even gonna play this. We're just gonna purge, gaining all that excess energy, building up our corruption. Since our starter relic lets us get extra corruption whenever we over gain more energy than we can uh, hold. Okay. Uh, do I want to? Yeah. Let's let's use the spell here to keep building up our corruption. Null and void. Just keep discarding the unleashes. He's gonna hit us for quite a bit next turn, so we want to ensure that we draw this wreath. It's going to be a lot of block for us. Okay, so this time we can do a really neat little interaction here. Playing this as our opening card puts two Void Coins in the deck. And since we had nothing else in the deck, we're now guaranteed to draw them off of this Void Kiss. And then we'll just go ahead and discard them. Replace them with real cards. It's still too early for you, Separated Soul. We don't want to set our corruption to zero yet. So you'll have to go... Mm. Okay, and let's ditch a Curse Shield. We'll purge this guy at this point. I'm a little worried about these voids. Those could cause us some problems if we draw one or both of them at the same time here. Okay, I'll, I'll do Curse Shield and Purge the Unleash in that case. I want to have an empty hand so I can draw as many cards as possible. We want to cycle back around to that uh, Separated Soul that we unfortunately drew really early. Okay. Dump that. Thank God we have uh, Tower Shield here. Very, very helpful. But you can see, yeah, the, the damage is really ramping up. So we gotta end the fight quick here. That means we're going to need a lot of damage, which I think is going to have to come from the separated, so I, th I think we really do just need to get back around to it. Uh, might take a hit next turn. I'm not sure we're going to be able to fully avoid it. I do have this energy potion, which I will use if I need to. The early game is always the toughest for Corruption Daughter. Okay, that's the unupgraded Void Kiss. Uh, we do have the bonus block coming in from these guys now, so they're nine apiece, which is really good. We'll go ahead and play them all. Manage to not take the damage yet. Okay, and at this point we can see the Separated Soul is up to 84 damage, which is a ton. So we'll just need to get to that and hit him for just a little bit more. Nothing too crazy. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do some of that now while we have the opportunity. Just from purging, we should get to the, uh, the 91 requisite damage now. So it's all about just finding the card, and Void Kisses are a great way to find cards. Come on. Okay, didn't happen. So here... yeah, we're definitely gonna take a hit. Even if I use the Energy Potion to play this Curse Shield, it doesn't put me below Liquid Membrane, so we'll just be taking 23, which is rough. It was in the bottom 8. Yeah, Membrane's great, Divine Shield. It definitely is. Um, couldn't, couldn't get us a perfect here, unfortunately, but that's exactly what I was talking about with Separated Soul. Very powerful, but it's inconsistent. You know, you're, you're reliant on that draw order RNG. When this was on top of the deck after the first cycle through, that was the big problem. So I'm, I'm going to save the energy potion. Take a big chunk there. That's going to happen. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Can I please have my separated soul? At this point, we probably could have just killed him with unleashes. 
if I had focused down on that instead. But anyway, finally we get our kill. All right. The class trainer here, uh, we don't have... The, the smash is, is probably not going to happen. It's looking like I'm going to skip this flesh and blood, I think, to grab the card pack. Uh, it doesn't show up on the minimap, but this tile here always has the card pack. With this little, like, triangle at the end, the this one in the center here on the left edge always has a card pack. So... I think I'll just roll the smash then, since it's a rare, it has better chances of rolling into... Or, excuse me, since it's an uncommon, it has better chances of rolling into a high rarity card. I don't want to spend too much money here, but I'll roll it at least once. If nothing else, just for the free Void Stone. You always get a Void Stone when you roll at the Class Trainer, and Daughter has the unique ability from her Void Manipulator Relic to take Void Stones out of cards and put them elsewhere. So this is almost like 160 Essence to buy a random Void Stone at worst, which is a pretty good deal if you saw the prices for the... Uh, Stonesmith earlier. It's like 480, I believe, to buy a Void Stone when we're playing with the increased essence cost modifier. Okay, so what lies waiting is definitely not a card I really want. Do I want to roll it one more time? A yellow stone is a good one. It's pretty good. Extra block. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just accept this. I don't want to pay extra. We're not going to use the What Lies Waiting, but we will snag that Void Stone. Probably slap it into our other Void Kiss here. And we also got this Blue Stone, which is going to be really handy as well. I think I want to put this on... Here, you know what, actually? Let's take let's take the yellow off. This is like... We can, we can pretend that we've upgraded this Void Kiss now. It also is going to draw and discard two cards. And then the yellow can just go on... Uh, I don't know, probably an Unleash, so we can mix offense and defense together on the same card. And I probably do still want this Cursed Blade. I think it'll help out with the early damage that we might be lacking, even though this is not a long-term uh, include for the deck, I suspect. Okay, so again, until we've gotten rid of these voids, we're always going to start by just dumping them, but when we in open with one of our Void Kisses, we'd rather play the Void Kiss first, because this draws cards off the top and then discards cards. While there's two voids in the deck, we have increased odds of drawing them with the Void Kiss, and then we can just discard them immediately. So it's actually better to do the Void Kiss first before we spell. Just a very minor optimization there. See, because we drew this one, there were two chances to draw Void. We discard it immediately. Now we send the other one with the spell. And no more Voids in the deck. Which is great. Another opportunity to just play the Maddening for Corruption game here, so... I guess I will. And I could do this to sift some cards, but that's probably not worth it. I think I'd rather just purge. We'll get extra Corruption from the additional energy anyway. Okay, 22 next turn. It's just Curse Shields and the singular Yellowstone here in terms of block. So we need to block at least 12 to get into Membrane range, and we have a lot of cards that block 6, so pretty likely that that happens. So I don't think we need to hold any of these cards is basically what I'm getting at. We'll just keep building up Corruption. I, I guess I will hit for 10. That's pretty decent. Okay. Yeah, at this point, we probably can go ahead and use the spell on another Unleash. It's unlikely we'll draw into one of the voids with three more cards left in the deck here, even if we go to an empty hand. So then the spell will be on cooldown and then ready to go next turn. Should be fine. Go ahead and get our block there. Only two threat next turn is no big deal. Membrane will be in effect. Just keep whittling him down. Okay, so Separated Soul is up to about half. Hmm. 
pretty unfortunate that we're just going to have to hold on to this for a few turns. But I don't want to have to cycle all the way back around just to find it, because that was not good last time, as we saw. So we're just going to try to hold on to this until it's a kill. It shouldn't take too much more. A couple unleashes, and then the separated soul will get him. There goes one of those unleashes. That's a bit rude. Okay, send a void. And we'll just go for maximum corruption gain here. What do you know? It's exact lethal. Didn't even have to wait another turn. Hell yeah. Alright, and we have a very, very early Soul Collector as well. This was purely incidental that we pathed here. Um, yeah, this meager offerings is not good when we don't have any Soul Tithe gaining cards. Uh, six for a random common could be okay. Redstone pretty bad with how few attacks we have. Rage only affects attacks and afflictions. We only have two attacks. So it's either random common artifact or nothing here. Uh, I don't know how useful a random common is truly going to be, but you should probably take any opportunity you have to increase your power in the early game with Corruption Daughter, so I will. We got the Black Cherry. Uh, that's not the worst. We're going to start triggering this pretty consistently later down the run, assuming we make it that far. But I was hoping for something that would be more immediately impactful. At the very least, the uh, eye is going to give us stealth against this jerk. So that'll make him a little bit easier. Do I want to put in Cursed Blade against Skeletal Mage? I probably should. Although I don't expect I'll necessarily be playing it. Maybe it's time to cut the Maddening. Yeah, let's try this. We have the Tax Ledger, which is, again, probably not what we want. Don't really want to go into Soul Tithe. The Compost, which is really good if we get more discard stuff, and the Pale Butterfly. The only draw we have right now is on these two cards. I could move the Void Stone here to a different card, and then we'd have three things that let us draw to trigger the Pale Butterfly. Any other stuff that we're picking up that draws? No. Hmm. It's a bit of a tough sell. I think I'll just go with the Compost for now, then. Compost is pretty strong. Okay, pretty good start here, too. We're going to be able to get off to the races very quickly, gaining corruption. So start with the Void Kiss, same reason as the last fight. Didn't find any of the Voids. The last card we discard comes back to hand, so it doesn't actually matter what we discard here. We'll go ahead and dump one Void anyway. And I think we're just going to... Get rid of everything, yeah. Okay, so that was our free turn. He is online now. We need to deal with 21 block next turn. With Wreath still in the deck, that should be very easy. Which means I can just keep building up corruption. This one comes back. Okay, and we're up to 18 already. Pretty good deal, pretty good deal. Do I want to play this one? I probably should. We missed the four block there, but it's fine. Okay, so definitely not going to use the separated soul yet. We need to wait and go back around. Really lucky we didn't draw the void there either. We can just dump that with the spell. Very fortunate. Uh, I don't want the void coins, so we don't want to open with wreath. So, well, actually, you know what? I could just go Wreath and then immediately discard both with Null and Void. That actually sounds pretty alright, huh? Let's do that. Sift the Void coins out of the deck. Then we can we can discard the Separated Soul here, because the Compost is going to trigger, so it comes right back. Up to nice 69 damage there. Still not quite enough. Uh, 22 block... I should probably play or hold this Curse Shield. That's the responsible thing to do. Let's play it. Gonna continue to hold the Separated Soul, though, until we can get the kill on him with it. Ooh. What the heck? 
Okay, um, is this enough damage? Assuming that we purge the curse shield. Hmm. How much damage is it just right now if we don't account for any other stuff? We have 18 by 3. And then, actually, we need to purge this just to have enough energy. So that would be 123 damage. Not quite enough. Not quite enough. Can't use compost here. Hmm. Playing this for 9 block means we're still taking a hit for 11. That's very unfortunate that it's 11 damage. It could have been worse if we drew a void and became vulnerable, but this is a, this is a sticky situation. Because 24 is a multiple of 3. So that means that... 24 at 75% is 18 damage, which is the same as 23 because of the way this game rounds. So purging the curse shield does not actually increase our damage output here. Hmm. You know, here's something I've actually never considered before, but uh, <laughs> extra energy becomes corruption. Does that mean extra energy from the potion? I've never actually had to think about that before. Would that be enough for us? I don't think so. Every point of corruption we gain is an extra three damage on separated soul. I don't think it's enough here. I don't think the math works out. Even with the energy potion thing, if that actually worked the way I hope it does, but... Yeah, okay. Well, I think we're just gonna have to take the hit then. This is just gonna be a bit scary moving forward, but we are alive, so that's very nice. We'll just go for all the damage we can here. Keep the separated soul. We've got that energy potion. Whew, Corruption Daughter starts. Okay, so we're confused this turn, which means everything costs one extra. We've drawn the void. I want to... S yeah, okay, let's start with the Sift here, since there's only one in the deck. We just want to have more chances to draw probably Cursed Blade or Unleash here. Okay, we did get Cursed Blade. Uh, the next card I purge comes back. None of these have purge effects, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just do that. Okay, so if I go purge, purge, I could play this, but that's not going to be enough. Yeah, okay, so we'll just pass, basically. Keep the block. Hold on to the separated soul. One more turn should probably get us there. We keep drawing this thing too early. Okay, and we have tower shield anyway, just in case. Still not quite enough. There we go, finally. Oof, down to three health. No health potions or anything of the sort. We could heal here, but uh, moving the voids out of the deck is going to be more important for the long-term success. And it's also liable to save us. No more dead draws. I wish I could grab this potion. I really do, but I don't think we're going to win if we don't look at this card pack. Uh, we do also have this green stone, so that's kind of neat. We could put it on... Shed if we wanted to get that in, but I still don't think we have enough uh, cycling. An interesting thought as well is that you can put I could put the green stone on the separated soul so that I at least know when we're gonna get to it. Obviously we don't want it on turn one, but if it's if I think it's gonna be good by the time I first shuffle through the deck, then that would be a smart play because rigged in this game does not just mean it starts in your opening hand; it means anytime you reshuffle the deck as well it also goes back to top. So I don't think we're quite fast enough for that yet. We want to see this towards the end of the, of the first reshuffle, but something to keep in mind. Instead, I don't know, actually, <laughs> none of these are all that amazing with the green stone right now. That is unfortunate. That is quite unfortunate. Doesn't have much use for the time being. 
Let's at least look at who we're fighting here, huh? The Dragon Whelpling? Yeah, he's got a lot of health. Probably too much to try and do something like a cheesy Greenstone Curse Blade and just wipe him out immediately. Yeah, I think we're just gonna have to leave the deck as is. Okay. So, we don't have to use our spell for voids anymore, which means we're probably instead gonna use it for unleashes. Uh, we will start with the Void Kiss, though. Yeah, more chances to draw unleashes out of the deck. And just keep sending them there. We just need to gain all the corruption. Quick Corruption is the name of the game right now. We need the Separated Soul to get pumped up very, very quickly. Okay, it's still in the deck here. We want to sift it or discard it. It's not ready yet. Curse Blade, also probably not very useful right now. Yeah, I mean, 39 damage is good, but it's going to add a lot of Soul Tithe and eat all our energy, so... Not yet, I don't think. But I will play this for block. And then we'll go ahead and use the Null and Void as well. Yeah, and we'll, we'll cycle around the Curse Blade as well. Try and keep the burning down as much as we can. Every time we purge a card, we lose a stack of burning. Uh, don't really need you, Mr. Curse Shield. Here I could put, like, Void Coins in the deck and then sift them with the spell, but that doesn't seem all that useful. We just want to get rid of the Banes, so that's what we're going to do. And we'll hold the wreath, I think, for next turn, so... Null and Void, ditch the Banes. Oh. <laughs> Put it in our hand with the compost. Whoops. Not that that really matters. Okay. At this point... A lot of Unleash is still in the deck. Okay, we'll, we'll do the wreath now. And then we'll want... Probably want to play the Curse Shield. We'll, we'll Void Kiss first, just to see what the draw is. Okay, yeah, nothing. Okay, so Curse Shield puts us back below the membrane. Uh, Curse Blade, we don't have the energy to spend on it now. Make use of our compost there. All the burning is gone, so that's quite handy. And I think just in the interest of energy efficiency, we will play the Curse Shield there, even though we're missing out on two block worth of value. Ditch the Void Coin off the Fear there. 84 on the Separated Soul. Yeah, it needs, needs quite a bit more damage. Okay. For now, we'll just do Double Unleash. 11 next turn is really not bad at all, because we got 9 here, and that's guaranteed. So let's just send the Unleash. We're guaranteed to draw Void Coin and Void Kiss, so we can discard the Void Coin that way. More Burning, probably not going to be an issue. We'll purge way too much for that to really matter. Uh, goodbye, Bane. Okay, the compost is ready. Get our block. And is this a kill? Yes, it is. Very nice. Alright, we need to see something good in this booster pack. We need the help. Interesting. Okay. So, we've got an Unshackle. This card is ridiculous Death Strike generation letting us double attacks. If you play this card as your opener, you get three Death Strike. The problem is it only works on attacks specifically, right? And we don't have many attacks. Dark Pulse is probably the best candidate. This is going to be reasonably good against the boss to pick off, like, the minions and stuff. Uh, Soul Tithe. This, this is a ton of Soul Tithe. We definitely do not want that much Soul Tithe. Uh, unload is, is reasonable immediate damage, and the Sift 2 is, is relevant. Dead to Rights and Shadow Dancer, probably not very applicable for this deck. I think we'll roll the in for a penny. This has got to be the worst one. 
Allomancy, huh? Well, that's a lot of Void Coins we could generate, potentially. That would be very good with our Shed. I do want to get Void Coins going, so... Glad that we picked that up. What's the next enemy? The Scout Light. Okay. Okay, how do we want to handle this guy? This guy adds uh, Voids and stuff into your deck. So, you know what? Let's take out the Cursed Blade. We haven't even played it. We kind of knew that might be the case, but uh, we'll put in the Unload instead to help get rid of the garbage card that he gives us. And I'm thinking about the Allomancy. You really want to have, like, Rage and Death Strike when you play this to generate all the Void Coins. We could put it in alongside, like, a Greenstone Shed... I mean, it seems pretty decent. It seems pretty good. I kind of want to give that a try. We would do, like, cut an Unleash, cut a Curse Shield, go Allomancy, Greenstone in the Shed, put that in, something like that. And then do I want the Dark Pulse yet? Not really, it's just a single target fight. In which case, the Unshackle is probably still worth it. Probably, even if it's just doubling like a Void Kiss or an Allomancy, that's that's still good value. As for what we cut, though, I don't want to cut too many Unleashes. But we do have other damage dealers now, so I'll cut one more. But I'm keeping an eye on the number of Unleashes we have there. If you dip too low, you can get yourself into some real trouble. Okay, we have Stealth versus this fight. Not much to do with the Stealth, though, as you can see here. Uh, hmm. So whatever we discard or purge next goes into our hand here, so we can sift something to effectively tutor it out of the deck if we want. Normally that would be good here if we had something with like a purge effect, but we don't. <laughs> None of these cards have purge effects, so it doesn't actually matter what we get here. So I'll just go ahead and sift the uh, separated soul just for that discard gain two corruption effect here. And because it's going to be a while before we want to play this... Okay, here's the Unshackle. We'll go ahead and throw that out now. So we have three Death Strike. Anytime we play a card whose energy cost is less than or equal to the amount of Death Strike we have, we lose that many Death Strike, but we double the attack. So here we could double our Unload or our Void Kiss if we want to. Which, I don't know if it's necessarily worth it. It's probably good to just get the 40 down right now. That is a lot of damage. It'll eat through most of our Death Strike, but that's fine. And then we get to sift two more. This one goes to our hand, courtesy of Compost. So, you know what? Let's get the Allomancy, actually. That's where we'll use the last Death Strike. So, we'll hit him for two here and get four Void Coins, which will be good with our Shed. And I think that's basically all we want to do here. I don't even really feel the need to play this Void Kiss. I want to stock up some energy. Okay. The last card is Wreath, which is not particularly useful for us right here. Yeah, we don't really need the block cards here, so we'll just purge those away. back to the hand. Uh, he has not added any voids yet, but he's about to, so we can save the spell for that, or we could use it now. Probably better to save it. We can start a void coin chain using the spell as well next turn if we need to. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We'll just we'll purge down all of this, hit him with a null and void, and the separated soul is actually big damage at this point, so I think we'll save all of the damage in the deck and just get rid of the non-damaging cards. To all y'all raiders, if you're enjoying the stream, go ahead and drop a follow so you can catch me when I stream next. I usually stream like three or four times a week. Right around this time, I usually start uh, 1 p.m. Central Time, so about 50 uh, minutes ago. We do Max Difficulty Vault, we do... Sometimes we do Yu-Gi-Oh, but usually it's just Max Difficulty Vault. 
Uh, if y'all did not know, I did some of the design work for this game. In terms of cards and relics and stuff, Liquid Membrane was one of my creations. So, you can get the inside scoop. Thank you, Trench. Always a pleasure to have you in the chat. Uh, let's just purge the tower shield here. We're just gonna kill him when we draw the separated soul. So yeah, you know what? We'll even we'll just use the spell here and get rid of the void. This is the problem with the separated soul, man. It's not consistent. That's right, Divine Shield, plug in the YouTube channel. We do upload our runs to YouTube as well. So if you want to catch VODs, if you don't have the ability to watch live, let me go ahead and link the channel here. And there we go. There's the channel. You can watch all of the uh, previous runs I've uploaded. There's quite a backlog at this point, including a lot of challenge coins. Um, and we're probably going to be doing card tier lists after the balance patch that is probably coming soonish. Um, just to make sure it doesn't get obsoleted. So that'll be fun. Getting extra Death Strike is really nice. I'm kind of wanting to just upgrade the Unshackle here for that reason. Uh, putting Void Coins in the deck with Allomancy is theoretically nice. Card tier lists? Uh, I'm just going to like read through all of the cards on a class-by-class -class basis and rank how good they are or like you know how you sh when or how you might want to use them is the idea. Which will be quite the project, because each class has about 100-something cards in this game. <laughs> and then you got to include the neutrals, which would need to be included for each character, because they're different for different characters. Just look at all the overcharge synergy in Tempest to understand why that would be the case. <laughs> so... Yeah, so there's going to be some discussion about Balance Trench in a couple weeks, probably. Uh, and from whatever comes out of that discussion... We may or may not be making some changes. Uh, I assume there will be changes, but they, they, they might be substantial, they might be less substantial. It all depends on data and feedback and stuff. Um, as for specifics, there, there are like a handful of individual things. Like I mentioned, the liquid membrane might actually be getting a, a very slight nerf. Uh, but otherwise, I don't have any specifics right now. But rest assured, I will be uh, personally advocating for uh, several of the cards that I think need the most help, like uh, Surprise Attack and Repost, for example. Do I think Daughter needs more help? Uh, it's hard to say. She's always been in an interesting spot. Soul Tide Daughter was like ridiculous for a really long time, and so we had to. She had to get nerfed a little bit. And Corruption Daughter, on the other hand, has always been on the weaker side. I sh yeah, let's just do the Unshackle. So it's going to be an interesting decision, uh, what, what we need to do with her, if she needs the help or not. Can't say exactly what's going to come of it yet, though. Came back after the last big rebounds with Monk and Hidden. Yeah, definitely the, uh, the, the new Hidden stuff was awesome, dude. Wish Grave Shot wasn't terrible. I mean, the Purge effect is pretty good, right? That was uh, that was my suggestion. I said we should put a purge effect on it, and I think it's been pretty nice. We'll throw in the overcharge or the deliver from evil here, not for the overcharge, but just because it's two for fifteen block, which is pretty good. Having a dense card is nice since you can always purge excess cards in this game. Uh, a card that is like if I if I literally could just staple two curse shields together to in, you know increase the cost by one but double the effect, that would be an amazing deal, right? Like doubling your cards like that is really really beneficial in this game. And Deliver from Evil is sort of that, basically, so we'll put it in there. Trench, have you ever had the the pleasure of doing uh, Once More With into Grape Shot? That's a hilarious combo. Very fun. Um, yeah, 
Okay, let's get into this fight. What's up, Bentley? Good to have you here. Gordian Quest and Arcanium on the sale. Too many card games? Yeah, I know, right? I've been playing some uh, Midnight Suns, the new uh, Firaxis Marvel game, where it's kind of like XCOM, but you have cards. It's pretty interesting, although the uh, deck building mechanics are fairly limited, so it's not really much of a card game. But that's what I've been doing in my off time. This is a pretty terrifying start here, all of them buffing and the banes being added. Not generally what you want to see. We can grab something to hand here off the compost, so... I guess why not take, uh... Allomancy, since we have the rage right now. It's dealing two damage, it's going to be doubled by death strike. And so we will end up with a fat stack of void coins, look at that. Nice, make a down payment on a house with those. Okay, yeah, I mean, look at this. It's turn two, and there's 41 damage coming our way. This is why I was thinking that I might want to grab the unload, because that's 40 damage, and that pushes us a lot closer to killing the Hellmongrel. Luckily, we've got the tower shield in hand here, so that'll do a lot to handling this ridiculous turn. Yeah, basically, Trench, it is kind of a similar combo, just ridiculous damage going all over the place. I guess it's like Unbalanced Fury would be the closest comparison. So we do want to be a little careful here, though, because this eats one of our Death Strike stacks, so we're down to two at this point. If we were to play the other Void Kiss, for example, we no longer have the opportunity to do double uh, unload. I was really hoping we were just going to draw it, draw the unload off this Void Kiss. Ah, there it is! Nice, dude. Uh, doesn't really matter what we discard here, it comes back. So we can unload for 40, which is great, but the only way to actually kill him after that would be with Null and Void. Sad state of affairs, but I think it's what needs to be done. Even if it is, like, <laughs> so expensive. Two to deal nine. But this is a huge deal, because after he dies, he weakens everybody else, so it dramatically reduces the damage coming my way, all the way down to 20. We don't need the tower shield anymore, we can just do uh, wreath. So, that's very nice. Okay, and here we drew a void coin. We can easily start the chain by using our spell to send one from the deck. So we'll begin by putting a couple more in there. And let's get this chain going. Uh, discard the Separated Soul, because the c uh, compost puts it back. Uh, this will be pretty close to killing you if we can... We need uh, five more, which is only two extra corruption, so that's actually easy peasy. Now we can kill you, but before we want to hit you, after all the other enemies are dead, the Forsaken Pup will run away. But we do still want to kill him if we can, because every time you deal damage, you build your Voidstone bar progress by that much. Oh, wait a minute! Oh, you guys get to see the, uh, the special interaction! I didn't even realize that this was going to happen. Uh, if you have food items, in this case it's the black cherry, or other things that a dog might like, like I think the running shoes on the Enlightened, that relic, stuff like that, uh, something that a dog might, you know, play with or eat, then if you kill all of the other enemies besides the pup, and he's the last one left, he'll actually join you. This is very rare. I've only done this once before ever. Uh, there's just not that many relics that it works with, and you have to... Th this fight only happens on floor one, and it's usually relatively early. So, this is a rare occurrence, but you can see now, we just end our turn, and... The pup disappears, and now he's over here. The adopted puppy. This is indeed a rare pupper, it's true. Yeah, normally you uh, you don't even meet the conditions for this. It's, it's, it's very uncommon. But now we've got him. Uh, what he does for us is that he'll save us from a lethal blow, but then he would run away after that. And while we have him, any time we would get a regular Void Stone 
through like a shop or something, there's a chance that it can show up instead as a unique uh, dog void stone. I think it's called a fetch stone. If you put it in a card, then you can click on the puppy and he will put that card into your hand, which is absurd. The last time I saved this puppy, which was the first time, uh, I never found that void stone and <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen again, but it might. We'll just have to see. Uh, okay, so for this fight, I said I probably wanted Dark Pulse as an AoE card. It'll help me deal with the minions a little bit. And what do I want to cut for that? It's actually a bit of a tough call. Again, right? I don't want to go too low on unleashes, although swapping damage for damage is okay. I could cut the unload. This guy does give you Banes. Hmm. Okay, we'll we'll drop one more unleash. One more unleash. I can be a little bit lower in my like draw consistency. Right? Like normally the reason I would want to have all these unleashes in is just because once the corruption builds up enough, these things hit really hard and you want to draw them reliably. With only three, it's not super reliable, but because I have the compost, I can make use of my spell to search them out of the deck. So I'm willing to drop a little bit lower than I might otherwise be. Okay, we do have stealth because of the Seer's Eye. We counted that out as part of the reason we took this. And we get the Unshackle right out the gate, which is excellent. So here we can grab whatever we want off the compost. Again, I think it's probably wise just to get the uh, Allomancy started grab all these void coins we're gonna we're gonna use them no doubt since we upgraded our uh whoops it's here since we upgraded our unshackle and it gives us that 25 percent rage using the allomancy on the turn we have that rage is a big deal because it rounds the damage up from one to two which is very very big difference literally twice as many void coins okay so separated soul way too early here in fact, this whole hand does not really do anything. <laughs> That's fine, though. This is this is what the early turns are often like for Daughter. You're just chilling out, doing very little, building up your corruption, trying to get somewhere eventually. Uh, is it worth trying to soften up the minions a little bit? Probably. After these guys buff their frenzy, they're kind of scary. So... Making sure that we're going to be able to kill them with the Dark Pulse seems prudent. Okay, we do need to actually draw the Dark Pulse, of course, although we'll need more Corruption before they're really ready to uh, get got by that. No Void Coins in the deck or anything right now. I don't necessarily want to put them with Wreath yet either, so we'll just block with the Deliver here. And this is hitting for 10 currently. It's going to build up a little bit. I could use the spell now. I might want to save it. No, you know, we'll, we'll use it now. We'll use it now. It'll come back around before we need to start a Void Coin Chain in all likelihood. Hitting this guy immediately puts him in range. So I guess I'll do that. Okay, so there's the Dark Pulse. And now, since we don't need to double this to actually kill them, we can unload on, like, this guy if we wanted to, although we're very low on energy at this point. Hmm. Yeah, okay, you know what, actually? What, what if I just kill this guy with a regular Unleash, let him spawn a new one, and then the Dark Pulse is going to get doubled by the Death Strike, although I do miss out on the Slay still. That's, that's probably worth it, I think. That's probably worth it. Or if I was just, like, lucky and drew Allomancy next turn, I could spend Death Strike on that instead, but that's unreliable. So I'll just chill, actually. I'll just chill. Okay, we got our Void Coins. We can start the chain with Null and Void. Plus eight corruption there. Very, very nice. 
Uh, we'll just send two Void Coins, honestly. Do a lot of drawing. Separated Soul is here. It's still too early. Not quite enough to justify that. I do sort of want to hold the Tower Shield, though. That's a lot of damage next turn. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Fight's going reasonably well so far. We also are probably going to get a Black Cherry heal here, so that'll be really good. Just need to go up to 40 Corruption. We are almost there. Okay. Uh, Tower Shield to start. Calamancy on you, I guess. And we'll, ju we'll just save this Void Coin for now. We're not actually that close to death anyway, again, because we have the dog. Can afford to take one big hit if we ever needed to. But looking at stuff like this, it seems like we're going to be fine, right? Go ahead and Void Kiss here. Look at all these Void Coins. So much free block. Three block every time we draw one of these guys. Excellent. And they just keep coming. Good god. Okay. So, the Dark Pulse here, barely not enough to get the kill. That's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and dump the... Actually, what do we want to dump here? The Separated Soul dealing almost 100 now. We're actually getting pretty close to the point where it's going to be a finishing blow on this guy. I guess I should go ahead and do Curse Shield first. We don't want to waste the puppy if we can afford not to. So let's just do this. It's a pretty big hit. Okay. Do these guys are both buffing, which is kind of good for us. They're not adding damage to the stack. I think we're ignoring them at this point and just going after the king. So let's draw some more void coins. Right? We, we... Oh, wait, no, that was all of them. Okay, I thought we just whiffed on... <laughs> okay, okay. Um, send... Anything, because it comes back. Can get our block like this. The separated soul is still in there. So we should just have this now. So we just hit you twice, and then the separated soul finishes the job. Okay. Things were a little bit dicey there, but the Tower Shield and then the uh, the lucky draw with the Allomancy kept us from kept us from losing. All right. Up to a nice healthy 48. Not bad at all. So, get our free blessing now from the well. Unfortunately, we don't have, like, literally any debuffs to make use of with this monocle. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no debuffs. None whatsoever. I don't even think there's any in the backpack. Oh, no, there's there's dead to rights, but uh, we're not playing dead to rights. Um, extra max health, eh, not really all that useful. But the booster pack, this could be huge. We definitely want more cards, so... I'm just going to take that, see what we get. Hmm, okay, well, immediately I'm disappointed by the rare. Strike with Blood is not the rare that we want. We do not engage with Soul Tithe. What I'm not disappointed in is the Flesh and Blood. Flesh and Blood is a card that I really wanted to pick up last floor, but I had to dodge because the other path was just too much more valuable. But now we get one anyway, so that's great. This is a really nice target to Death Strike. And the Purge Effect, if you can upgrade it, is also really good. Gaining two Corruption, very, very handy. Good with the Compost. Uh, we have a Mastery Reroll available to us, though. Because we have cleared ten Daughter Runs and mastered all of our cards, after you've done that, you get the ability to reroll any one card in the pack, and it will reroll into a card of the same rarity. So we can reroll this rare card into a different rare card, and good god, is that a nice one. Ice Wall. Reducing your threat to zero, potentially very good, even if it's really expensive, but the real star of the show is that Purge Block 5, especially because we can double dip on it with the compost, 
And if you upgrade it, it blocks 10 on Purge, which is insane. Just utterly ridiculous. So this was a phenomenal pack here, just for these two cards alone. Very, very pleased with this. Yeah, that was a wonderful reroll. Okie doke. Okay, uh, I need to go refill my water real quick. So I'll let you guys take a look at the floor awards, and I will be right back. All right, we are back. We got our water. Hydration reminder to everybody in the chat. Go drink some water. Okay, time for me to actually look at the uh, floor rewards here. I see we've got a soul block. That's an excellent card. Uh, distraction, also very good. Works nicely with our void coins. Uh, what else? Diversion's really good. Another card that I had to skip on the first floor, but really want. Reap and sow, not bad either. That's probably about it, in, t in terms of stuff that I'm really interested in. Jewel of the Void is not bad with our blue stone. I could put the blue stone in there, and this would be a very good enabler for our uh, discard effects, our void coins and what have you. But I'm not going to go out of my way to get it, because I think there's a decent chance we just don't use it anyway. So these are going to be my highlights. And also, of course, it's crucial that you... Uh, spend your souls on floor two so that's going to be either this node or this node depending on which one we think makes more sense it's looking like it's probably going to be the soul collector this time because we want to grab these cards and well i mean i don't know though we really want the elite too right if we come up top here we skip the distraction but get the soul block whereas if we come up the bottom and we also want the elite we get the distraction but not the block Divine Shield pointing out we got a Blackstone coming up as well, which is a pretty big deal because we're going to be able to put that on a big damage dealer, probably something like the Flesh and Blood, because this is going to be a better solution for damage than what we're currently using, which is the Separated Soul, because we're going to be able to play the uh, Flesh and Blood in the middle of fights, and if we draw it at weird times, it's still got value, whereas Separated Soul, of course, you're just dead in the water if you set your Corruption to zero and you can't finish the fight, so... This, this is going to do a lot, right? If we have a uh, an upgraded Flesh and Blood, it's dealing 150%. Blackstone, we're doing that twice. That's 300%, which is the same amount as Separated Soul. It costs twice as much, but it doesn't set our Corruption to zero. So that's going to be a big deal. We could also put it on our Shed. If we upgrade Shed, it naturally has rigged. So we could take the Greenstone out, put that maybe in the Unshackle, since it's so nice to draw this early. And then we uh, put the Blackstone in the Shed and regain enormous amounts of block there. That's always handy. Um, okay, but let's figure out this Pathing Conundrum, huh? We probably want to come down from here to get this Treasure Chest. Passage Payment's not so bad. Uh, the Spell Child is kind of bad for Corruption Daughter because her starting spell is so powerful. Uh, that two-turn cooldown is really amazing, and it's excellent with compost, so we don't want to bother with the Spell Child. So at that point, we would come up and around like this. If you're wondering why we dodge the empty tiles, it's because we take five damage whenever we step on an empty tile from that Collapsing Hallways modifier. So if we did this path, and we skip the Soul Collector... We can do this, visit one of these two shops, either one really, depending on how much money we have. And then we would skip the distraction, but we would get the elite, we would still get the soul block. We hit both shrines this way, which is 
not all that amazing because we don't have we, we probably won't need to heal and we won't need uh to pur purge voids i suppose if we wanted to we could uh take this raven's gift instead of the diversion i don't know if that's really worth it though we would come back up like this at the end uh if we could get a queen stone to put on our flesh and blood instead of a black stone that would be pretty nice Queen Stone just makes a card trigger plus one. Yeah, hmm. Okay, I, I will consider Raven's Gift here. That actually isn't that bad. Purging the Void immediately. Getting a free Elite Relic out of it. I do really want the Diversion, though, and I also really want the Upgrade. We're light on upgrades right now, so... Uh, let's edit the deck real quick. Put in these awesome new cards we got. Let's cut the Unload, I think. For flesh and blood. We don't this isn't nearly as valuable now that we got rid of our voids. So we'll do that. We'll cut a curse shield for the ice wall. The redstone is not particularly useful, but we might as well put it on something, so why not unshackle, I guess? And try and, you know, just make the allomancy thing that much better if we draw them both at the same time. And that's probably it. I do have another Deliver, so I could cut one more Curse Shield for it. I probably should do that, actually. Earlier I was talking up how it's nice to have denser cards. At the same time, you don't want to go too hard on the expensive cards, because, you know, if you have one energy and everything in your hand costs two or more, that's not good. Um, and we have a decent number of expensive cards, right? Like four, three, two, 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 all these expensive cards. But the uh, liquid membrane reduces our need for low-cost blocks. So because of that, I feel comfortable doing that exchange of a cursed shield for a deliver from evil. We'll pick up our reap and sow here. This will be handy. 75% damage just like an unleash, but because it's an attack, it scales with rage and interacts with death strike. Which is a very handy trait to have. So here we can use our spell and the compost to get whatever we want out of the deck if we feel like that's worth doing right now. The other thing is that we could save our spell to try and do this next turn and assemble the Unshackle plus Allomancy combo. Uh, that's probably not necessary, though. So I'm just going to grab the... No, you know what? Actually, I, I am going to save it. I've changed my mind. I think the value we would get from using it right now is just not actually significant enough. Thinking it over again. Okay, and we still did not draw either piece, so decent odds that we're just going to naturally draw the two at the same time without any shenanigans. Which means that we aren't really doing much of anything on this turn. Uh, usually not a good idea to hold cards against these guys, of course, because they gain extra frenzy. Well, you have a card in hand, and we have a couple of block cards and draw and stuff, so yeah, we don't need to hold this. We do not. We've accomplished almost nothing so far besides building up correction, but these guys have been playing very passively, so it's fine. All right, we've got the Unshackle. I guess we can just grab the Allomancy now. So we'll go Unshackle first. Also, uh, the Double Flesh and Blood is pretty handy. Um, how do we want to do this? I guess we could Void Kiss, right? Because this is two of our Death Strike, this is one of our Death Strike, and then the final Death Strike goes on the uh, Allomancy. So I guess we will go ahead and Void Kiss then. There's the Allomancy. And then we can... This is dealing 84, which is just enough to kill. I kind of don't want to kill him, though. After you kill him, these guys gain one Frenzy, and then they're going to hit a lot harder. So I actually wish it wasn't quite killing him. But there's really nothing to be done about that. We are about to draw the Ice Wall, so that will pretty much just solve our block issue. So, very well. I guess we'll go ahead and flesh and blood him. And then we'll just Allomancy one of y'all. 
get a fat stack of coins. And that'll be that. Oh boy. Quite a few banes drawn there. Uh, let's get a void coin chain started. Okay, that wasn't so bad. We've got a Void Kiss as well now. Um, I suppose we'll go after the one that's actually attacking. Keep discarding Void Coins. Keep discarding Void Coins. Good stuff. Now we can just purge that for block and play this for the rest of it. Uh, so this is barely not enough to kill you. Um, if we go up to 26, does that push us over a threshold? 26 times 0.75 is rounding up to 20, so that actually does matter. He's got the 20 damage. Oh wait, <laughs> I was doing the math as if I wanted to kill this guy, even though I just said I wanted to kill the other one. That was a little bit silly. Oh well. Uh, we could stall out here, actually, to try and uh, get to 40 corruption for Black Cherry. Um, honestly, not, not the worst idea. Could use a little bit of extra health, huh? Because we can kill him whenever we want. How much corruption can we gain? Double dip on the purge effect there. We're very close. Uh, does that count? Okay, yeah, I think we can get the, the heal here. We'll hold the null and void just in case. I'm I'm pretty sure it's it's basically guaranteed here, though, that we can get the heal. So we can go like this, this, we have 40 corruption, so there's our heal. Nice. Do that one more time and we're basically full. We'll be one shy of full health, but that doesn't really bother me. Now I actually have to decide if I want the Raven's Gift or if I want the Diversion and the Upgrade. What would we upgrade? Definitely Flesh and Blood. Yeah, that's like not even a question. 150%, that is a big deal. The Dark Pulse in a solo fight ends up being the same amount of damage, but it doesn't have the purge effect, so not as good. Ice Wall, uh, yeah, also a really good upgrade. Definitely in agreement with you on that Divine Shield, but uh, immediately after this we're getting a uh, chest, so whichever one I, uh, out of those two cards, those will be these two upgrades basically. Yeah. Yep, definitely in agreement with you there. Do I put the Reap and Sow in? It has a Sift effect, which is very good with Compost, but it does not have the Discard to Gain Corruption effect, which we are actually getting decent value out of. Uh, I don't know, honestly, why don't I do this? The unupgraded Void Kiss is a little unimpressive. Why don't I just put the Blue Stone on a Reap and Sow instead and we do it like that? That seems a bit better. And I think I should go for the upgrades. Upgrades are really important. Our relics are doing just fine right now, honestly. I mean, membrane, eye, compost, these have been putting in a lot of work. I don't really feel like I need to improve my relic quality so much. Okay, we'll go ahead and get the shed down. And then we can do the... Uh, little combo here since we have Allomancy. We prime the compost, activate the spell so as to discard on Shackle. Compost puts it into our hand. We'll play it twice here using the rebound. We've been playing it just as the opener, which gives us a lot of Death Strike, but uh, if it's not an opener, you get to rebound, play it multiple times. Um, keep it around so it doesn't expel. You'll notice though that even though we had 100% rage, the Allomancy still only dealt 2 damage. This game likes to round up a lot. So 25% Rage rounds 1 all the way up to 2. And 100% Rage doesn't get you any further. So an interesting little thing to note. That's why one of the classic combos with Allomancy was Shadow Dancer. You get the Death Strike and the Rage immediately. We're just not doing that because we don't want the Soul Tithe. Anyway. I would like to get... 
flesh and blood into my hand if I could, so let's try and find it. Nope. Couldn't get there, but it's probably gonna be just fine to continue taking it slow. This guy's reasonably slow. When he hits, he hits pretty hard, but between the double deliver, the wreath, and the, uh, wherever it is, the tower shield that we have, and the ice wall, I'm sure we'll be fine to handle one big hit. Do I want to use the reap and sow? Not really. There's nothing all that great to sift. So we'll just purge everything down and then redraw the other deliver from evil. That will be our block sorted. Okay. So we have Hex now, one of these cards we just have to throw away basically, so we'll get rid of the Curse Shield. Deliver from Evil is a little bit of extra block beyond what we need. We'll go for it anyway. Dark Pulse deals okay damage here, I guess. It's not particularly impressive. Can't double dip on the Flesh and Blood Purge or anything. Yeah, we'll, we'll just do it soften these guys up a bit. If we can death strike it on the second go round, they might well die to that. Void Effigy has yet to attack, so he's got quite a bit of AP built up. 9 by 3. I think he's gonna attack this turn. Yep. There it goes. You can see we got 44 on the stack for next turn. Which is an awful lot. But Tower Shield, more or less all the block we need. Okay, so this one comes back off the compost. None of these cards have discard effects, so it does not matter. Uh, I guess you. <laughs> okay. Do we just start with a flesh and blood here? We could do null and void instead and send some unleashes. That seems alright, I guess. Gain some more corruption this way. And then we'll just go ahead and purge this play this, we do need to start killing you. And then Tower Shield will give us almost all of the block next turn. Okay, so we could get a Void Coin Chain going. I think we should probably start with that. This, it, it, it does make the compost a little awkward, but I don't think we really need to worry about that. We've got the Dark Pulse here, uh, so I just want to find the Unshackle if I can. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of that. There's the Unshackle! Lo and behold! Thank you very much, Unshackle. Showed up right on time. So that was just our spell. We have not actually played a card yet, which means we can just go and get the opener effect immediately for Death Strike, doubling our Dark Pulse here, which is going to kill both of these guys, giving us the Slay effect. Tons of corruption gained. And we don't even need to block, we can just wipe you out. Good fight. And we upgrade our Flesh and Blood. Crack this chest open. Interesting. Okay. Haunted Familiar. Haunted Familiar is probably the pick here. This is a great card. Uh, we, we would probably just do a one-for-one -one trade on the Shed. Shed's not bad at all, of course, but we don't necessarily need the block. We're doing pretty much all of the defense we need with cards and Void Coins anyway. The extra from Shed has not felt, like, super impactful. Meanwhile, Haunted Familiar, giving us extra Corruption, is going to accelerate us quite a bit. And this is a really nice card to play on the first turn if we have Stealth from the Seer's Eye, because we get to spend a lot of energy on this for a big effect, versus only being able to have like this one cost card. So I will take the Familiar. I would like to upgrade the Haunted Familiar as well, to drop it down to three. But uh, Ice Wall takes precedence. 10 purge block is just too insane to say no to. Okay, so here... We'll go ahead and make this trade, just like I discussed. And we want to get the diversion in. Diversion is really, really good. We'll probably just cut a curse shield for it. Just a simple, powerful effect. 
And it's good with the compost as well. All right. So for the first time in like forever, we've got Allomancy without Unshackle, but we can do this little number here and get the Unshackle anyway. We'll only be able to play the Unshackle once if we want to do the Allomancy thing though, which is a bit sad. I should probably do it anyway. We want to get those Void Coins to enable our uh, Haunted Familiar. It's a big deal. This guy caps our Rage anyway, so we're not losing value from the Rage. And besides, like I mentioned, rounding, the Rage doesn't actually matter. Uh, only having one Death Strike is the thing that I'm annoyed about here. I would like to have the extra Death Strike as well, but I suppose I'll just take what I can get. Normally with Daughter, you don't need to worry about this guy taunting you, or at least with Corruption Daughter, of course, because you can target anyone with abilities, even through taunt, right? I can just target whoever I want here. Uh, and the fact that he caps your Rage usually doesn't matter, matter either on Corruption Daughter, because your abilities are not affected by Rage, but specifically because we have Dark Pulse. I'm thinking that uh, the Dark Pulse is going to be picking these guys off, potentially, especially Drowned, because he always has one vulnerable. So, I feel like I should be piling my damage onto the Deep to begin with here. And I think now that we have a Haunted Familiar, I am at the situation where I want to play Wreath as an opener, basically always. So we'll start by doing that now, get some Void Coins. And we'll leave this with the Liquid Membrane, float it until next turn. This is just a purge everything kind of turn, I think. Taking it nice and slow. This is our opportunity to get to full health as well with the Black Cherry. Shouldn't be that hard now with Haunted Familiar, I don't think. Okay. Diversion's still in there. Alright. Yeah, let's go ahead and start with Void Kiss then. See what we can draw. A couple of Void Coins, very handy. We'll get rid of you for that sweet two Corruption. Whatever we discard now comes back to hand. Okay, Flesh and Blood already up to 32, which is not at all bad. Dark Pulse at a much less impressive 16. Uh, the Taunt has worn off, though. We could just get rid of this guy. This guy can kind of scale out of control. And on Impossible Difficulty, you'll notice that the Deep only gives us 80% in the uh, Battle Progress meter. So, killing him will still allow for a respawn, so it's fine to just kill bloat, Bloated first and then kill the Deep. Just need to be sure that we could handle the 20 threat that he drops on the stack. Which, currently, we can't. Not with this hand. Uh, I will think... I, I do think it's probably going to be good to use the spell here and just discard the Diversion and clean up that last 7 block. That's very clean. It also lets us sift one card from the deck with Null and Void if we wanted to play that. Which we might, or with Reap and Sow. If we just send both of these at the deep, he gets pretty low, actually, huh? Let's do Null and Void first. Go ahead and sift one out of the deck like we said we wanted to. And we're just going to send the Separated Soul. Drop you down with Flesh and Blood. And while we're at it, we're even going to go ahead and Dark Pulse. Get everybody nice and softened up. Now we can just spread out our damage somewhat evenly and should be able to clean up the fight and not have to worry about Bloated's uh, death explosion damage. Okay, this hand would be really bad if not for the Void Kiss, so shoutouts to Void Kiss. Now we'll just send all of our Void Coins gaining so much corruption off Haunted Familiar. So <laughs> much corruption! Look at it go! Look at it go! Uh, and yet, somehow, we did not find uh, either of our unleashes. Hmm. Very well. Um. Hmm. It's a little bit awkward. Got our heal off of the cherry, though, so that's nice. I probably want 
Do, do I even want Death Strike? Does it even matter? If I'm only gaining one Death Strike, it just helps Reap and so I don't need to double a Flesh and Blood. I don't need to double a Dark Pulse. It already kills everyone. I don't think we bother. I don't think we bother with this stuff. Tower Shield is all the block we need already. So... I guess we can play it once just because we don't need the extra corruption at this point, and if we play it one time, purge it one time, we still end at 3 out of 5 energy, which is the ideal amount. And then, uh, do we have any void coins in the discard? We do not. It's a little bit annoying. Either way, probably just pick off these two and then get you next turn then, huh? So we'll kill you, kill you, get our block, get rid of the useless void coin, and just chill. Shoutouts to Liquid Membrane too, man. See how it's it's made us be able to make so many good energy efficient plays, where we just leave a little bit of threat on the stack like we did that last turn, man. And we don't have to waste energy and worry about taking chip every fight. I love this relic. It's simply ridiculous. Okay, passage payment. Uh, not bad at all. Do I think this run would have ended without the membrane? I don't think it would have ended. Uh, you know, we, we have the pup as well, right? And we've been healing a little bit off the cherry and stuff. I don't think it would have ended. But... We might have had to use more of our resources. We might have had to use our potion. We might have had to use up the pop. Uh, stuff like that. It's definitely done a lot to smooth things over and get us to where we are right now. Nearly full health, about halfway through floor two. Great spot to be in. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about this passage payment here. This is another pretty decent void coin generator and sifting two random afflictions. Uh, void coins themselves are afflictions. So, it's a good way to start a chain of uh, Void Coins. And if the enemy adds Afflictions, then you can just get rid of those as well, which is nice. What I would cut for is the real question right now. Probably just another Cursed Shield, honestly. That seems fine to me. Seems pretty good. Here, we definitely do not need to heal, and we do not have any Voids to get rid of. Normally, you would gain Souls when you pray for Greed, but that's one of our modifiers. Soulless Greed. No Souls when you pray for Greed. But since we are coming up to some shops, the money will still be very much appreciated. Prices in the shop are so high on this level of difficulty, so all the money is relevant. Every single point of essence counts. And what do we have here? The Dragon Scale, huh? The first time each turn you sift a non-expel card, place a volatile copy of it into your hand. Does that sound good to you guys? Because it kind of sounds really freaking good to me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm excited to see that. Uh, j just for the sake of completeness, we'll look at the other two. Uh, the Band of Resilience, totally unnecessary. We are perfectly fine with our block right now. Um, and the Wizard's Hat, if you end your turn with zero energy, we're basically never doing that. We're always floating a ton of energy. So we would be getting this effect, the Delay Rage, and we don't have very many attacks. So it would be okay because it lets the Allomancy deal too, and it's like somewhat decent with Flesh and Blood, Reap and Sow, and Dark Pulse. But no, I mean, it's obviously Dragon Scale. Drew. Dragon Scale is ridiculous. Agreed, Trench. It's super fun as well. Just such, such a cool relic, and it's also with the compost, a really nice little synergy there. So we, we have a lot of manipulation of our deck available to us right now to just grab stuff out of it by sifting two different ways. Very, very cool. Um, also, we're fighting Dolus. I totally just glossed over this. The All of the costs of our cards are random, but it's not like there's anything that we really want to put in. These are all like cheap for the most part. This is the only expensive card that we aren't playing. Uh, and I guess what lies waiting as well, but this has its own obvious set of issues. <laughs> Uh, and besides, we just get good luck, right? It's that easy. Just have the four cost card be zero instead. It is simply that easy. Uh, okay, here's something I don't actually remember. This only says non-expel cards. Uh, I think it actually works with conditional expels like Unshackle and Wreath. Because here I would love to get Unshackle into my hand. I don't remember for sure though, so 
Why don't we go ahead and just test it? Hmm? It does, that's right. It does work with conditionals. I did remember that correctly. So I guess I should have done that first to get the expel effect. Oh well. Uh, when you play cards against Dolus, you lower poison. When you purge cards, you gain poison. So I want to purge the cards first that will give me poison. And then play the Allomancy to get rid of that poison. And as nice as it is to have a zero cost ice wall, I don't want this to just be sitting in my hand constantly taking up space. So we're, we are going to go ahead and purge it twice. Just for that nice free corruption. That was our freebie turn with stealth. So here we can grab whatever we want using the Reap and Sow. So why don't we get a passage payment, huh? How about we just get some more Void Coins in the mix? Okay, you cost three. Maybe we don't want to get some more Void Coins in the mix. Um, yeah, sorry passage payment. A little too pricey. That's more like it. See, now we're talking. Now we're talking passage payment. Uh, flesh and blood here may be worth playing for one. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, I, I guess I'll take that deal. I will take that deal. Um, purging down, though. We're going to have Void Kiss plus Diversion next turn for seven block guaranteed. We're going to hold this. I think that's all we need, honestly, in terms of blocks. We can just purge everything else. Get a decent chunk of poison, which I'm not thrilled about, but again, our, our, our defense is solid. That's not been the, uh, the issue for us. It's been killing quickly enough. Unfortunately, our Null and Void is very expensive right now. Hmm. Also, uh, I apparently miscounted. We do not get the Void Kiss guaranteed, but we can just sift it and get it that way, right? So... Just do a little dragon scale shenanigans. And then we'll discard you and you. And now the uh, compost is ready to go as well, so we can get whatever we want using Reap and Sow. And what do I want? I don't know. I, I kind of have, like, everything already. What do you get for the man who has everything? Well, it turns out the answer might just be a flesh and blood. Uh, 22 damage is reasonable. I guess I don't really want to play a 3 for a null and void, so we'll just get rid of that instead. And we'll go deliver. Play the Unshackle at least once. Do I want to play it again? That's very expensive. Notably, uh, Death Strike looks at the card's current cost. So right now, for example, the Dolus has made our Flesh and Blood cost three. We would actually need three Death Strike to trigger this instead of the usual two. The parenthetical number is the card's base cost. So I would actually need a lot of Death Strike to double trigger this. So it's probably just not happening. If I want to play this at all on this turn, it's only going to be a single trigger, and I just have to accept that, which means that... Uh, it's probably not worth playing this 3 cost on Shackle. So we'll just purge that, gaining some more poison along the way, but then we'll reduce it with the Flesh and Blood. And, I mean, 15 block next turn is perfect, right? So we'll do that. Okay, this time uh, we have the Confusion debuff, so everything has plus one cost in addition to being randomized, which is pretty horrible if you just look at what we're dealing with here. Um, notably, we're actually going to get Overcharge from Deliver from Evil for once, so that's cool, I guess, right? Do a little bit of that. Everything else, though, is just kind of not really worth playing. Using Void Kiss to get rid of a Void Coin is kind of nice. I, I guess we'll do that. I don't know, man. Four is it's so expensive. So expensive. But it's going to trigger the compost. It's going to draw us more Void Coins potentially to discard to get more Corruption. I think it's actually worth it here. As exorbitant a price as it is to play, dude, the inflation is real. I'm still going to do it. And yeah, this is fine. We'll just sit on the wreath now. 
Alright. So, here we'll do the old trick of play Wreath when you have no cards in the deck. So that all the, the deck is just two Void Coins. And then you get the chain going. Uh, we want to keep you around. Ooh, we want to keep you around, too. I guess we don't need the Dark Pulse. Unupgraded, it's uh, underwhelming. Uh, Null and Void can sift... Oh, we're out. we're out of Void Coins, actually. I thought we would have had one left. We drew all of them. In that case, I don't know how we're getting rid of this guy in the hand. I guess he's just going to hang out. <laughs> Uh, uh, the bad thing about Void Coins being Afflictions is you cannot purge them. Afflictions just can't be purged. Uh, and normally that's not a big deal because they cost zero by default, and when you actually play them, you just discard a card to gain one energy. So you just play or purge all the other cards in hand, and then for zero, you just toss out the Void Coin and you gain one energy. It's basically like purging it. But against Dolus, when it costs like three, that calculation goes out the window. So we might just be stuck with this guy for a little bit, because it does not have the scrap keyword. We can't just discard it at the end of turn. It's going to hang around. A little annoying. Uh, but anyway, we do probably just want to purge that. Get our poison up. Go ahead and null and void you. Uh, we want to keep all the damage at this point, so I guess we'll just send diversion. I don't know, curse shield. We just want damage. Uh, you know what? <laughs> they they called me a madman, but I, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pay three for the stupid void coin. And just in case, I'm going to hold the tower shield. This is almost certainly unnecessarily cautious, but we're in no rush here. Yeah, did not need it. Blah. Your soul will be separated, Dolus. Okay, this is going to be yet another rare that we don't want. We picked up the uh, Cursed Blade. Now we're going to get the Unholy Cleansing. Unfortunate that uh, we've had a bit of bad luck in the rares department, but at least we got that juicy Ice Wall. So I won't complain too much. Only a little bit of complaining. Uh, do we want to change our deck at all for these guys? No, I don't think so. We should be fine. These dudes apply lots of burning. But not a huge deal when you spend so much time purging cards, like we do. Okay, so this time, I guess we'll be smart. And we'll use the spell on the Unshackle before we play Haunted Familiar, so we can get the Expel uh, opener effect. And then we'll go ahead and throw down the Haunted Familiar this way. Uh, nothing really to do with Compost here, it'll just be extra energy slash corruption. Compost is so good on Corruption Daughter, man. This thing has generated so much energy and corruption for us. It's ridiculous. And it won't even show up in the corruption gain stats as being from Compost. Because all it's really doing is just giving us a card and then we purge the card. But I see you, Compost. I see the work you're putting in. You might not get the recognition for it from the stats thing, but... We, we know. We know. Okay, um... I guess we'll just start with a blind void kiss. Uh, normally, I like to say rush down the pyre as quickly as you can is usually the best way to go. Um, some people will say you should kill the right pyre mite. Because when you kill these guys, they cut your burning in half. But like I said, we purge so much that we probably don't need to worry about the burning. So I'm going to just go for the, the pyre itself here. We've got Allomancy. Um, we don't have any means of gaining rage, so... It's only going to be hitting for one, which is a bit sad. But what can you do? Uh, let's ditch Passage. Um, I don't know what to do. It doesn't matter, actually. The thing comes back anyway, so... Okay. Purge that down. Keep the burning low. Is it even worth it to play Allomancy? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go ahead and play it. Only four Void Coins, but it's still very good to have those. Um, the Null and Void here does not actually do all that much for us, so I don't even think it's worth using. We're just going to keep purging down, 
And since this is efficient block, we might as well play it. Another turn for the membrane to do its thing, man. I love this relic. Love it. The relic quality in general has just been through the roof this run. Phenomenal stuff. Okay, uh, like I said, I think we always want to open her the wreath at this point. So we'll just start with that. And we are in a position to... To do what exactly? Hmm. I guess we're just doing this. The Dark Pulse just does not deal that much damage yet. It'll get there, it'll get there. It's probably still worth playing anyway. It puts these guys like halfway to death. Most of that, of course, just coming from the Death Strike. Otherwise, dealing 72 here is also quite tempting. I could play both of these. That is definitely an option on the table. I think I should probably do that. That's just so much damage, man. Who could say no to that? Juicy, juicy hit for 72. Dark Pulse does not look so hot in comparison. Maybe I don't even do the dark. Maybe we just do Null and Void, huh? I'm kind of thinking that maybe I just do Null and Void. And uh, do we have any threat on the stack? Just the one... Yeah, okay, we'll send a second Void Coin then. Double draw and discard. Passage payment? Yeah, don't mind if I do. Purge, purge. Is this worth it? Void Kiss for 10 does not kill if we unleash, but the other unleashes will? Yeah, this is worth it. Okay, sorry Passage Payment, you're not actually going to be played. Dropping Burning down to zero seems like the better choice. Okay, so now a single unleash kills you, so we'll just do that. And the spell is not ready, so might as well go ahead and Tower Shield him here. Yeah, that's, that's kind of all there is to do right now. We have zero defense coming up. None whatsoever, so I will hold on to this Ice Wall. And we're not even going to play an Unleash. We're going to Purge. When it's just the Pyramites, they're not that dangerous. Uh, we just need to stabilize with our Burning, and then we should be able to take care of them at our leisure. So, in this case, we can grab only Unshackle, unless we start with Void Kiss. So I guess we'll start with Void Kiss. Uh, probably keep the Unshackle around, though. Don't really need the Allomancy at this point, that's just excessive. Reap and Sow to get a Flesh and Blood could be pretty strong, so I'll do that. Compost puts the Flesh and Blood in hand. I don't need two, so we'll get rid of the fake one there. Purge that, and then we can go for some Rage and Death Strike. <laughs> a little bit of overkill there, just a little bit. Just a tiny bit of overkill. And the Null and Void will take you out next turn. Membrane, man, putting in the work. It's, it's so easy to underestimate if you haven't ever had a run with it before. Yeah, like, when I when I even first came up with this idea, in my head, I, I was, like, 15 threat or less, which would have been absurd, <laughs> but it, it, it's hard to conceptualize how powerful it is until you've actually got your hands on it. And then you start to realize, oh, man, this thing is ridiculous. All right, decision point here. Do we want to go to the card shop or the potion shop? We have somehow, across this whole run, only acquired a single potion... Which is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so I kind of really do want potions. Uh, we have the uh, Praetorian Guard modifier on at one stack, so we have to fight three of the Vault Guardians. Normally this is the biggest time that you would consider your potions. Uh, if we hover over the little map thing here, we can see who our Vault Guardians are. And figure out who we might want to fight and how relevant potions will be to fight them. So we can see that uh, the spiders are here, and we don't have an exploding bottle, which is a classic counter to the spiders. Uh, Trench says, I would usually try for potions, so I can hopefully grab a draw or energy for the void fight. Uh, I'd say those are definitely good instincts to have. 
uh, the vast majority of the time a draw potion uh, or an energy potion or a stealth potion. Those are probably the big three to brew versus the void make a huge difference. Um, exploding bottle versus spider nest is another great one or uh, same thing goes for stealth against the spider nest um, and there's just other random ones that can be handy like energy versus the star council because you can't hold cards from turn to turn you just want to play them all so extra energy gets you there um, hmm. I mean I'm, I'm reasonably happy with our, our card quality at this point uh we would probably put a queen stone on the flesh and blood, I think. The other option would be to like put it on haunted familiar. <laughs> but then it's not rigged anymore, of course. And because this is a card that always expels, we can't just grab it for free with the dragon scale. We would actually just have to hard draw it, and that kind of matters. But on the other hand, we don't actually do much drawing and discarding until we've cycled the deck once. So the only fear would be that we would draw this on a turn when there's like a lot of threat on the stack or something, and we can't play it. So, I don't know. I, I think our cards are going to be fine once we put the good stones in them. So, I, we probably don't need to go to the card shop. This this is probably a good enough deck as it is with the addition of uh, these final couple of cards here. By which I really just mean soul block, because <laughs> that's it. Yeah, alright, well, let's do the potion shop then. Buy some goodies here. We have... No draw potion, no stealth potion. It's a bit sad. Of course, we can still get stealth from the Seer's Eye. The next fight is going to be stealth, so it will go stealth, no stealth, stealth, no stealth. Then we have to fight three Vault Guardians, so stealth, no stealth, stealth. And that means that we will have no stealth versus the Void. The very last fight, you can count ahead like that. And that really stinks. The only way we could reduce our combats is if we went, like from here straight to here instead, but then we're missing the soul block, and I really want the soul block. <laughs> I really want the elite too, of course, so that's just not really something we can change. So I would have liked to get a health potion here. Uh, pretty sad that we don't have one. The uh, Corrupted Concoction is pretty cool, though, for its belt effect. Two void coins in the hand deck and discard is pretty wacky. Rage potion, not bad in the belt either, uh, even though we only have so many attack cards. Since you can trigger it whenever you want, just waiting until you have, like, the giant flesh and blood makes that pretty good. So, I could just grab, like, all three of these. Honestly, that wouldn't be bad. We'll go ahead and do that. No real point in buying the health potion. If we're dying, I think it's going to be, like, all in one giant hit, probably. Uh, so, we're, we're not going to bother with the, the health potion. Alright, special void stone time. Every time you visit the Queen, she will offer you the Queen Stone, which gives a card trigger plus one. You will also be offered one of two class-specific King Stones. This time we got Recur One, Discard One, which is a very good one, but notably we cannot afford it if we buy the Queen Stone. And then the remaining ones down here, Pawns, Bishops, Rooks, and stuff, these are uh, randomly selected from a fairly large pool. You can check out all of them in the Compendium. But what we got this time was draw one and expel. So this is classically good to put on cards that already expel. So something like a uh, the Shed that we took out of our deck. We could put it back in with a Pawn in it. The Stalwart Rook. Loop. Keyword causes the card to go back into the deck when you play it. And a lay block four, of course. But mostly Loop is the crazy part of that. So... A really cool combo is if you upgrade your Diversion so that it triggers its Void Stone, you put the Rook in there, and then every time you discard the Diversion, it goes right back into the deck, and you can discard it again, and again, and again, and again. Pretty wild. Lastly, out of Random Volatile Common to hand, I don't like the Random Volatile Common stuff all that much. In this case, since we're drawing and discarding so much, we could probably discard the Volatile card that got put in our hand at which point it's basically turning uh, the fake card that this thing gives us into a real card from our deck, which is decent value, but basically always uh, worse than the Fading Pawn, unless we are putting this on a card that doesn't expel. Uh, one way or another, the Queen Stone seems like the obvious must-buy here, so I will trade for that. And that only leaves us with enough for 
one of the pawns. We are one shy of getting the stalwart rook. But I don't hate missing out on this too much anyway, because we only have one upgrade point left. And I might want to put it on something that isn't diversion. Like uh, potentially Haunted Familiar. Not sure exactly, but I think I'll go ahead and take the Fading Pawn. And just put that on the shed like I was talking about. We'll still have a decent amount of uh, essence to spend at the Well of Stars after we defeat the boss. And uh, as Divine Shield is mentioning, we do have our Blackstone as well that we got now just from filling up the gauge. So we got some interesting options here. We could do the Blackstone in Flesh and Blood and the Queenstone in Haunted Familiar. That might be better. Accelerating with the Haunted Familiar seems pretty good. It's just... I am a little concerned about our ability to reliably draw the Haunted Familiar, potentially. It could be a small problem for us. I don't know. We'll we'll give it a try. We'll, we'll try at least a couple of fights with this and see how it goes for us. The Fading Pawn into the Shed, which we will just be replacing... The last curse shield, I guess. And then the Blackstone, Flesh and Blood. This is going to be pretty expensive. But I think it'll probably be worth it. And then we have this green stone. That, I think, will go on the Unshackle now. And then the red stone kind of doesn't matter, to be honest. Uh, we don't have very many attacks, right? It's not super likely that this does much for us. But just in case, we want to put it on one of our abilities. So I'll just put it on this Unleash. That's because cards in this game resolve from top to bottom. So you'll notice that the Rage from the Void Stone has been added to the bottom of the card. That means that it will deal its damage and anything else it's going to do before we get the Rage. So if we put this on one of our attack cards, that attack card would not benefit from the Rage that the Void Stone generated. So it's better to put it on an ability since we can just play the ability before our attacks and potentially get full value from the rage. All right, last elite of the run. It's the hag, and we've got some interesting options here. The cultist ward gives us 10 delay block whenever we play a buff. We have two of those, haunted familiar and shed. So that's not bad at all. It makes it a lot easier to get an expensive power like haunted familiar into play when uh, you're getting that juicy delay block out of it. Another defensive option here, the Flame Shield. Block equal to the battle round every turn. Probably just worse than Cultist Ward in this case. So I don't think we're going to take that one. And the last one, the Fractal Feather. Whenever you play a card with the same name as one you played this turn, you get four block. So that works with the Blackstone, Flesh and Blood. It works with our Unleashes. And I guess technically it works with Deliver from Evil if we ever played two of those in a turn. Uh, also, it does technically work with Void Stones, but you don't really want to play Void Stones. Excuse me, Void Coins. So, I don't think this is really a Fractal Feather deck. I think we're just going to take the Cultist Ward. It's not amazing, but it's, it's fine. It's not bad. Uh, Hag does not like when you play attacks against her. Uh, I mean, like, the Dark Pulse is not all that great versus single targets, but... We really don't have that much that's like all that useful to put back to put in in its place. I guess dead to rights would be okay. Trying to apply some vulnerable. Yeah. We'll just do that for now. Notably, that is literally the only card we have that actually applies vulnerable, and we're not uh, we're not getting anything that applies vuln. Yeah, nothing else in here gives us vuln, which vulnerable is a huge damage increase. So. Take the Cultist Ward. Just go ahead and run out our Unshackle. We're mostly going to be saving the uh, effects of the Unshackle, the Death Strike. We're going to save that for later off the Flesh and Blood and stuff. But we can also just get the uh, Allomancy going while we've got the Rage. She reflects a little bit at us, but that just does not matter. We can let it float. Uh, compost is ready to go, so we'll use it with Flesh and Blood to get double value out of the Purge effect. Okay, we're just looking for our buffs. Could not find either of them yet. 
So I guess we'll go ahead and Void Kiss to try and draw towards them. Still nothing so far. Okay, there's the Haunted Familiar. Happy to see that. So we'll go Haunted Familiar. We have no Void Coins to use with the Dead to Rights, so that's just kind of useless. We've got the 10 Delay Block. Yeah, see, the, the Delay Block off the uh, Cultist Ward, even if we're not really taking damage next turn, uh, as long as we floated stuff on the stack with Membrane, it's going to get value. So this would have normally blocked for 1, because we're only taking 1 threat next turn. Because of Membrane, it's going to block for 9. Very useful. And at this point, I'm considering doing Null and Void. <laughs> Just to speed up our corruption gain and make sure we can get the shed, I think I'm gonna do it. Uh, no real need to use the diversion, but I guess there's no real need not to use it. Nothing really matters that we're doing here. Okay. So, if we play Passage Payment, it'll reshuffle the deck. When it tries to sift and there's nothing in the deck, it'll reshuffle, which will then get rid of some Void Coins, which will let us discard these Banes from hand. So let's go ahead and do that. Discard, discard. Of course, the Compost gives us one back. Lovely. <laughs> um, yeah, not much to do here. We don't even get to use our Fancy Stone because we're haunted. I'll do it anyway. Uh, we can sift to get a fake copy of a card here. What would I even want? Probably Null and Void. Yeah, probably Null and Void. Let's just do that, actually. Hmm. And go ahead and get rid of one more Void coin to get rid of the stupid Bane. And I don't know. Separated? Or Unleash? Probably Unleash. We draw the Separated. Okay. Do I want to hold this? This is 129 damage. That is kind of a lot. Draw the flesh and... We can go around the horn again one time. We cycle the deck really quickly at this point. Uh, hmm. 10 is not enough block here. We actually do need to play the tower shield. Annoying. In that case, we might as well do Allomancy first to get the extra damage on the stack. And then we will Tower Shield. And since we don't have another means of getting rid of the Void Coin, I'm just going to use that to discard the Unleash. Do I need to keep holding the Ice Wall? No, probably not. Probably not. Okay, we're hexed. Um, hmm. Dead to rights, discarding a Void Coin here is actually really good. Let's get rid of Void Kiss. Pitch the coin. Got another coin, and another coin. So we don't need you. And the Flesh and Blood is now 126. Pretty good. Uh, do we want... Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's do this, huh? Let's sift out the Unleash to get a volatile copy. We're still haunted, so we don't actually get the rage here, but we'll go 68 damage there, 135 damage there, yeah, that's super overkill. I mean, this, this is a sad state of affairs, because as crappy as uh, Dead to Rights is, I do kind of feel like it might be really important to keep this around. It's our only vulnerable. We didn't even have the option to buy a crippling potion or anything. At this point, I guess I could ask myself if I really need the soul block. Because, notably, uh, currently if we if we do this, it goes no stealth, stealth, no stealth. So we're missing stealth against this guy, the boss, and we'll also miss it against the void. Whereas if we skip this tile, uh, we do get stealth versus, versus both of those. But this is the last upgrade point, too, you know? So, like, I could upgrade the Haunted Familiar, or the Shed. Is that worth it? Allomancy. Dead to Rights doesn't matter, because the Void drops his debuffs by three stacks at a time. So three vulnerable is the same as two vulnerable against the Void, specifically. Upgrading the Diversion would be pretty good, too, so I could put the Blue Stone in it. Ah, oh, 
Jeez, man. But the stealth is going to be so nice. It really is. It's tough choice, tough choice. I'm thinking, th this is like everything you could imagine getting from a tile. A good card, a void stone, a potion, and an upgrade. Four different good things. And we're, we're having to think if we want to trade all of that for stealth against this guy in the void. Honestly, I... <sighs> It's probably worth it to try and get the stealth. It probably is. And it really pains me to skip on this. But like, you know, I mean, for all we know, the potion could just be like a health potion or something that's not very useful. And then... The soul block is good, but is it really necessary? Probably not. Oh, I'm, I think I'm just going to be very sad and skip it. Feels bad. But if it gets us a win, you know, then I'll... I will happily make that sacrifice. Okay. So, definitely opener on the Unshackle here. Let's see what Void Kiss has in store for us. This is gonna draw and discard four, which will immediately trigger the compost. So we need to keep that in mind. This is useless without Void Coins yet. Yeah, okay. Well, we did not get to the buff, but we at least got our Allomancy, so we'll do that. 21 next turn is a reasonable amount, so maybe I want to hold the Deliver. Is there anything really worth sifting here to get with Dragon Scale? Frankly, no. Also, I'm going to be greedy. I don't want to hold this. We've got this is a great defensive draw, this is a great defensive draw, another deliver from evil in there. This draws us another card. We can grab stuff with the dragon scale. We totally don't need to hold that. I'm gonna be greedy. Okay. Um, do I, should I get the opener first? Probably not. We went through our Void Kiss already. But opener and then spell. No, that's probably not needed. I get 10 delay block here. Yeah, okay, we don't need the opener. There's our Haunted Familiar, finally. So let's throw you down. Get our block with Deliver from Evil. 20 delay block. It'll be pretty handy, especially because we're drawing an Ice Wall. Do I want a fake copy of anything? Not really. We just aren't using the dragon scale very much right now. Uh, although, if I use the spell, we'll get a real copy and a fake copy, which is pretty interesting. There's just nothing worth getting right now, though. We just don't have enough corruption. I guess we could just use it to build corruption. Like, that's okay, you know? And playing this doesn't do very much, but... Saving the energy also doesn't really do anything. In fact, it actually does literally nothing due to a quirk of how overcharge works, right? When we have three out of six, we gain two energy base when we start our next turn, and the overcharge gives us plus one, so that's going to put us up to three gained energy, right? But then overcharge reduces our max energy, so we would be at six out of five, which you would think means that we have one extra energy, and we gain the uh, corruption because of that. But that doesn't actually happen. What happens is you go up to six out of six, no excess energy, and then when your max goes down, you just lose that extra energy. It just vanishes into the ether. So we don't actually lose anything by playing this. See, there's no plus one extra corruption icon showing up here. Funky interaction doesn't come up very often. Okay. So here we have the double flesh and blood, but again, we just we need more damage. We need to like build our corruption. Uh, let's get some discards going with passage payment here, huh? So this discard is not coming back, but the next one does. So I guess we'll get rid of uh, null and void maybe, and then I guess dead to rights in case we can. Now there's no way to get our hands on a void coin, is there? Uh, I suppose with Reap and So, if we're lucky, we could get one. Might as well try? Well, or should we? Should we just do double Flesh and Blood instead? That's probably better. 
Think about going after the assassin here too. Hmm. Yeah, because the first one is is being triggered twice. Also, we still have scale with reap and sow. Actually, mm, I, I didn't think about that. Scale with reap and sow. Yeah. Okay. You know what? This is this has got to be better. Oh, but then we we don't get to double the flesh and oh, jeez, this is suddenly a really complicated turn. Actually, I think it's gonna be best if we go like this. We'll go flesh and blood, purge ice wall, reap and sow. It kind of doesn't really matter. We'll hit you. Send a Void Coin. Discard the Allomancy. And I, I guess this Unleash. Then we go Dead to Rights, pitch the Void Coin, pitch Separated Soul. Everyone's vulnerable now. Oh, it's just barely not enough. It's just barely not enough. <laughs> I was not about to try and calculate if this would work or not. That was far too ridiculous of a turn. A uh, lot of Void Coins coming up. Spell's gonna be ready. Tower Shield in there. We don't need the Deliver. Yeah, so close, man. So close. It's probably all right, anyway. Daughter math hurts my head, says Trent. Yeah, man, it gets ridiculous, especially when you're trying to do, like, percentages and rounding and all... Oh, man. It's a mess. It's a mess. Because it's like, well, if I purge, it only adds, you know, this much damage to Unleash, but it adds a different amount of damage to Separated Soul and another different amount of damage to Flesh and Blood. And you can calculate it all out, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not the most fun thing in the world to do. Let's deliver while we have these Void Coins, get some nice overcharge. And we'll just do a nice long chain here. Doop, doop, doop. Yep, nice long chain. Uh, what do we want to end on? I have no idea. We'll just throw away the wreath, I guess. I don't know. Kill you with a void kiss. More discards, more discards. Soul Tithe plus Death Strike. Well, I get X Corruption from Purging plus Rage. <laughs> yeah, so many different modifiers you have to consider, especially on the Soul Tithe uh, build. Simply insane. Uh, this is 44 here, so we could theoretically hit him twice with that. Eh, seems worth it to me. It looks like we're gonna go another run without the uh, puppy triggering as well, huh? Because uh, the next place to get void stones would be like the Well of Stars, and we, can, we could maybe get the random ones there, and then maybe randomly get the puppy. Void stone. It's probably not gonna happen. Okay, so separated is just an instant dunk. But we do still need to actually handle you first. We got one void coin in there, so I guess we'll do a passage payment. 78. Uh we can't afford to do it all here. Cause like this plus this kills you, and then that kills you, but uh Oh, actually, wait, no, can we afford? Because if I go Null and Void on you for 80, that's two sifts, so we get one in hand. I think we actually can afford. Yeah, because we said we go, like, I don't know, this, this, right? And then we get the Ice Wall, and then we purge the Ice Wall, and then we go Reap and Sow... And then the blue stone discards that, and then we go purge, purr. Okay, whew. We found the kill there. We would have been fine anyway, but, you know. Good to uh, test yourself in those ways. Make sure you understand how your deck works. Do we want the Dark Pulse back in? It's, it's kind of not great to kill these guys. Scarab could be an issue because this guy taunts. And we do somewhat rely on flesh and blood. But I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, let's uh, let's give it a try. We do have stealth, of course. We do have stealth. Uh, wondering if we want to save the Unshackle opener. Thinking it might actually be the play here. And use it twice. Let's do that.
uh, the fourth card, right? So if we if we go like purge, then we can reap and sow, sending our allomancy, or we could send the haunted familiar here just to get that in play immediately. Yeah, if we're not uh, getting rid of the unshackle, then it's fine to just do it this way. Yeah, we'll just we'll we'll do unshackle things later. Haunted familiar down is a big deal, really big deal. Okay, and we can get the shed down nice and quickly as well. Very handy. Does not look like we're doing much else this turn, though. Um, I guess now is the time to do Dragon Scale uh, with Allomancy, because we can get our Rage off this Unleash. Uh, we need nine extra block next turn, so we're fine, so we can just purge all this nonsense. Get our Rage, purge, get our Void Coins, purge. So we got a nice set of four Void Coins there. We did not have Death Strike, so we didn't get the full eight, but... We will take the coins that we can get. Okay. So yet again, I have to ask, do I want to open her this Death Strike? Uh, again, though, I, I, I don't think I do. I don't think I do. I think I would rather keep it around for one more go. One more cycle through the deck. So we'll just go with... Double unshackle like that. Purge ice wall. Compost is ready to go, so we can double purge the flesh and blood. Uh, we'll just smack you for a little bit. The poison is also building up. We don't want to completely ignore the fever. It could get a little out of hand. Uh, but if we can manage a dead to rights, slap him with some Vuln, and then just have like a big old death strike uh, uh, flesh and blood, that's the name of it, then we'll be looking pretty good. So, I think we'll be just fine. Do we want to get a copy of anything from the deck here? Well, I mean, this could be the Dead to Rights turn for the Vulnerable. I guess, I guess I'll do that, yeah. Grab the Dead to Rights, throw that out, ditch the Void Coin. We become vulnerable, too, when we make enemies vulnerable because of one of our modifiers. But that's fine, because we're going to be reducing our block by more than enough here. Uh, we don't have... No, we do have stuff to sift here, so passage payment actually pretty good. We don't need two delivers. Next card we sift, we get one in the hand, so let's do passage payment now. So we get a void coin in hand, which we can send with the reap and sow. Send this one, and then the blue stone sends this one. And we can do a... a big void kiss now... What else do we want to sift? Separated Soul is not big enough yet. It's getting there, though. We'll go around the horn one more time for it. Unshackles back. We'll open her it now. In which case, I guess we'll, we'll drop the Void Kiss, and we'll just open her... Oh, wait, no, yeah. We, uh... <laughs> we'll, we'll save it and open her it next turn. Ten is exactly the right amount here, but, uh... I'll bump it down by just a bit. Because the damage is actually pretty reasonable. Uh, he is going to lose both stacks of Vulnerable, though, due to yet another modifier, the Adaptation modifier. Makes them lose two stacks of debuffs after a certain turn. Turn four for us. So maybe we can get another uh, Dead to Rights off. It's probably not happening. It's probably not necessary at this stage. So we'll throw down the Unshackle up to a staggering six Death Strike. So at this point, the uh, Flesh and Blood will be able to double trigger twice. That's another thing that's actually worth considering. Uh, cards that gain value from triggering extra times, like off of Death Strike, can in a way be worse with a Queen Stone than a Black Stone. Because with the Black Stone, we're getting two copies of Flesh and Blood. Each one of those can be triggered twice off Death Strike. If we had the Queen Stone in here... It would only be able to get triggered off of Death Strike one extra time instead of the two that we have available to us now. But of course, you just need the energy for it. 
So here we want to go with Wreath to get the Void Coins, and then we can sift said Void Coin. And just do a nice long chain. There's the Flesh and Blood. Pretty sure that is the end for you, Mr. Bloodhive. We're just gonna need some energy. In fact, we have enough to do an Unleash first for some Rage. And it's just massive overkill anyway. Good stuff, good stuff. We also get Swarm, which is a pretty decent spell, making your next single target card trigger again. Uh, but probably not as good as our starting spell with the Relics. Well, 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 what do we have here? The Nip of Drinking Alcohol? I sure do like this thing. Draw one more card each turn at the cost of one less energy per turn. Really good consistency booster. Excellent card. It's going to make it more reliable that we find our buffs quickly. It's going to make it easier to get dead to rights with a Void Coin in hand, and it just helps you find your important cards more often. So really, really, really good. We'll take that out of the freebies. Again, I don't think I need to improve my card quality and health. Uh, we're doing fine. We don't need the health. And lastly, we do not have enough to pay for more than one. We can buy two of these or we can buy this, right? Do I want to draft three commons? Do I want to draft one uncommon? Do I want to gain 10 souls? We're looking for vulnerable here, really. So, do I want to look at commons or uncommons for vulnerable? Well, the cards that give you vulnerable with daughter, you've got uh, Blade of Darkness and Knife in the Dark, both at, both at common. And also, since we're looking at 10 cards here, uh, it's a lot more chances that we hit one of those. So I think it's going to be better to go for the Promise of Normality. Uh, the souls are not that relevant. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go with the Normality here. Well, there's Blade of Darkness. Uh, it does, of course, give us Soul Tithe, which is less than ideal. We also have Doomed Descent, which is another way to uh, gain lots of corruption. So that could be something. I mean, it's not going to give us a ton, because it's really just the Allomancy that's generating Void Coins. Passage Payment only gives a few. We're not even playing it all the time. Uh, we can get the collection plate, though. That's another way to put some more Void Coins. So maybe we do, like, uh... Hmm, what? Blade, Plate, Descent? And I'm not entirely convinced we'll actually be playing Blade of Darkness, but it is there as an option. Same thing with Doom Descent, honestly. I'm not convinced we're gonna use this either. Most of these cards are just not very relevant for us, right? Like, I don't need another Wreath. I don't want a Yin Yang or a Masochist. So, I mean, we said we were looking for other Vulnerable. I'll just snap that up. This is pretty dang expensive, and I don't know what we would cut for it. But in theory, it's it's not bad. So I guess we'll grab that, and then this is the only other good Void Coin generator because this card is single use. So I'll take the Collection Plate. Release our souls for some free damage. Think about what we want to do with these cards. I should probably just cut... Um, cut one Deliver, I think. For the collection plate. One soul tie. That's really not that bad. I don't know. I don't know if I need it. It's getting real hard to make room in the deck. All of these cards are very strong. Same with Doom Descent, really. Like, I don't know, maybe... I, the Shed is not, like, super useful, right? So, it's it's just... It's okay. It is gonna matter versus the Void, though, I think, so... Maybe it's worth it to, to put in Doomed over Shed. Maybe it's worth it to cut something else for Doomed. I have no idea what... I'm pretty happy with most of these things. Cut even yet another Unleash. Cut the Null and Void. It's expensive. But the Sif 2, man, the Sif 2 is good! We do also have the uh, Corrupted Concoction, right? So that's good with the Doom Descent. 
Okay, I don't know about this one, uh, but I am out of water again, so I'll just take that as an opportunity to go fill my water back up and think on it. Be right back. All right, we are back. I didn't really make up my mind, but I think we're probably gonna leave out the Doomed Descent. Maybe it'll come in for the Void, maybe. But we also have to decide what blessings we want. Delay block seven, not super great. Uh, the less frenzy in the AP, that's like okay but I am really, really worried about the spiders. They would probably actually just kill me. We're very slow, and these guys will dish out damage very fast. We don't have an exploding bottle. We don't even have, like, bacon bomb or anything to kill them. So these guys are probably just a no-go. Uh, remember, we do need to fight three guardians, so if we're saying no to these guys, we have to fight all three of the other ones, but we only get two blessings anyway. The third one, just you just have to fight them. You don't get anything for it. <laughs> so, these two had better be good, because these were not. Uh, overcharge. That's a good one. Yeah. I won't complain about overcharge. So, we'll probably pick up this one. And 40% damage on Void Touch. That's not bad either. Yeah, seems like those are the two that we want. So, we gotta fight these two guys first. It is the first two that you fight who give you their blessings. The first one will be without stealth, the second one will be with stealth, third one without, and then void with. So which of these two do we want to fight with stealth? Probably the Death Knight is the one we want to fight with stealth. So that means we do Puppet Master first. And I think we will just try to save up these potions. Versus the void, we're going to brew an energy potion and belt a strength potion, probably? The Corrupted Concoction, if you brew it, you just start with 10 Corruption, which I think is a little slow for us at this point. And while the Belt Effect is good, belting the Strength Potion is definitely going to be more damage if we line up our Vulnerable and everything on the right turn. So, yeah, okay. So if we're earmarking the Rage Potion and one of our Energy Potions for the Void, that means we have one Energy Potion and the Corrupted Concoction to spread amongst the others. So, I think in that case, we would probably do energy against Queen and concoction against Death Knight. Yeah, I, I feel comfortable taking on Puppet Master as is. We had a lot of draw, discard, and sifting, so we should be able to deal with his Banes without too much effort. Let's hop in. Because we got a nice eight Banes on this level of difficulty that we have to deal with. And if they're stuck in hand, he gets stronger. A lot stronger. 
So to begin here, this I think this is another situation where we actually don't want to use the Unshackle for an opener. I'm wondering if we should actually take the green stone off of this and put it on... Uh, put it on I don't know what. Put it on something. <laughs> but it's kind of seeming like the opener is, is less and less appealing for this. So let's instead just generate... Well... I can grab anything I want to start here that isn't an Expel card. So I could just grab, like, a Void Kiss here. Let's start by doing that. Let's start by getting a Void Kiss. Okay, nice. We got the Shed. The next card we purge comes back. So why don't we go with Reap and Sow here to get the Haunted Familiar, then. Uh, this draws a card, so it's basically free. Okay, there we go. Buffs down. 20 delay block from it as well. Not bad. Okay, but now we just gotta focus on turboing through a bunch of draws and discards. That is the name of the game right now. We need to build up this corruption. So, why don't we get started with that? We'll go null and void. We don't really care about either of these. I guess we'll take the... I guess we'll take the dead to rights? So we can discard from hand just for... Just for extra uh, corruption gain. It's not like we're going to play the separated soul anyway, right? So discard that. Now the compost is ready, so we'll purge this twice. And then this gives us another void coin, so sure. Up to 25 corruption. We're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, at this point, do we just go for the opener on the Unshackle? Honestly, I think the answer is still no. We can dead to rights him here with the Bane. Get some Death Strike like this. Anything we sift, we get a copy of. We do need a little bit of block. Just a little. So how about... Collection plate. We do the compost thing on this again. Eight block next turn. There's quite a few banes in there, man. It's a little bit scary. I'm thinking I might actually hold the deliver. 232 damage, though. We're definitely getting that. Always want to do that. Yeah, okay. I will hold the deliver. Because he's going to make us draw three cards here. Okay, we drew one Bane. Not that bad. We can handle this much. Probably. We can handle this much, right? <laughs> well, that's a little bit annoying. We're going to have 11 on the stack. So we actually take the damage. Darn. Shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things. He took my... Allomancy? Hmm. That's actually a bit of an issue. We kind of needed that. Still got Banes in there. Go ahead and Passage Payment, right? Yeah, we'll Passage Payment. Get rid of that. Uh, the Compost and the Scale are ready now. So let's send... Reap and Sow. Because we can do... We can do Reap and Sow here, getting rid of that, discarding this from hand. And then we've got the real Reap and Sow, which we can also use to just pitch that. Send this. That's true, Bentley. We do get the 7 from the uh, Cherry back. So we, we can still get back up to full health, even though we don't have a, uh, a health potion. So, yeah, definitely shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Uh, do we want to? Yeah, we definitely do want to. We'll go We'll go for the Null and Void here, just so that we can ditch that Bane, recycle, and ditch another one. And we'll hold the Ice Wall. Yeah, I kind of forgot about the Black Chariot. Uh, <laughs> we healed off of it twice for seven, and then we healed for one, and then we never used it again until now. <laughs> But uh, it's no slouch. It's no slouch. 
I want to unshackle opener, but I also want to void kiss but not spend death strike on it. <laughs> hmm. Quite the situation that we're in. Fine, we will not opener the unshackle here. Or will we? No, you know what? We totally will. We can do it at this point. Just send all sorts of void coins. Um, we already triggered the compost, so it doesn't matter here. Get rid of this, get rid of that. Get rid of that and that. Whew, okay. So we can double dip on the flesh and blood once. And we have just enough energy to do this first for a bit more rage. 360 damage, not bad. Okay, first guardian down, we get stealth versus this one. Uh, we didn't need to use our potion. So... Yeah, I guess we'll just go ahead and do Corrupted Concoction here. And then versus the Queen, we'll have... We'll, we'll brew the energy. We'll, we probably don't even need to use this one, right? So yeah, we'll brew an energy, and then we'll have the other energy in the belt. To save for the Void. All right. Bring it on, Death Knight. So this guy punishes us for playing block cards, but he punishes us by putting Banes into the... Uh, the uh, discard pile. So we can sift those out, theoretically, to avoid his uh, downside. We'll see how that treats us. I forgot to reconsider my green stone. Whoops. I'll try to remember to do it after this fight. If Divine Shield's still in chat, he can yell at me. He's, he's good at reminding me to do stuff. <laughs> He'll be typing it out right now on his notepad to have it copied and pasted. Alright, let's, uh, let's go ahead and shed. This is another don't use the unshackle opener effect kind of situation. Uh, but we will do an Allomancy. We will do that. Uh, try to line up the compost here on Flesh and Blood. Get the double value there. Allomancy, and... Yeah, that'll do. There's our Haunted Familiar. Go ahead and throw that out. Uh, passage payment, just to generate some coins, seems okay. Not great, but okay. We could also just null and void him. Get some more sifting going that way. No dead to rights, no wreath. At this point, null and void will trigger the compost and the dragon scale. Yeah, okay, let's go for this then. And we're going to send... Which one of these do we want? Do we want Void Kiss or do we want Reap and Sow? I think we probably want the Void Kiss for the overcharge here. And then we'll just send Unleash. And then we can go Void Kiss, pitching all of this stuff. Okay, I was kind of hoping that we wouldn't draw that, but it's fine. And then I guess just in case we'll hold the Tower Shield here. We probably don't need it. But just in case. About to heal back to full off the cherry. Okay, uh, are we ready to open her the Unshackle yet? It's not that much damage right now. Not without a Vuln, but we can get our dead to right. Yeah, okay, you know what? We totally are. We'll go Unshackle. Then we'll go uh, Sift with the spell on dead to rights. This will give us a copy with Dragon Scale. Then we can dead to rights the void coin in our hand. Now he's vulnerable. So we want to save as much damage as we can. Let's go passage. Next card comes back. So it'll be purging the flesh and blood. And then we can go for 268 damage. And then we can do that again. Although at that point, we'd be taking damage. So, I guess I probably shouldn't. I should probably be responsible. As much as it pains me. I guess we can at least do the Reap and Sow here and discard the Flesh and Blood. The real card we draw will be able to be purged so that we can play the Tower Shield. And while we're at it, we can... S oh no, you know what? Actually, we don't even need to play the Tower Shield. We can sift like that. And then we can sift... Uh, 
What do we even want to sift at this point? I have no idea. Alamancy, you're, you're not all that useful anymore. Ditch that, ditch that, ditch that. Purge that. We don't have two Death Strike anymore, but this is still going to be a lot of damage. 173. Nothing to sneeze at. Okay. Glad I figured out the turn there. That one was somewhat complicated. Uh, this time we don't have our spell ready, so we just have to hard play a Void Coin. Guess nothing to be done about it. Hey, Flesh and Blood. So kind of you to join us again. Nice and easy fight. That was a breeze. All right, the final Vault Guardian, then. We will dual-wield energy potions. Ah, okay, yeah, there, it's, I told you guys. I told y'all, Divine Shield's got my back. The green stone. Okay, it's not even necessarily that I want to remove it, but I need to think about where it's going. I need, I need to really put more thought into it. Because I don't mind having the Unshackle in my opening hand if I have something more convenient to, uh to play first, but I also don't mind just drawing it later. What would I want in my opening hand always? Hmm. Because, like, versus Void and stuff, we're probably going to be trying to do Compost to get the Haunted Familiar immediately, which just requires us to purge a bunch of stuff. I... <sighs> I have no idea where to put this green stone, man. This is really complicated. Maybe I put it on a shed, and we have two sheds. Or maybe I put it on the Doomed Descent. Maybe I do put... Eh, you know what, actually? Maybe maybe Doomed Descent with the green stone is the play, huh? Maybe that's the play. I think it's pretty good. I just have to figure out what to cut. I really like all of these cards. Passage Payment is definitely the weakest card, but I, I just need to play every Void Coin Generator I have, and I'm certainly not going to cut it if I'm adding more Void Coin Synergy to the deck. No way. So I can't cut that. Same reason I, I want the Collection Plate, because it gives Void Coins, and I do still need some block cards. Dead to Rights is my only vulnerable uh, aside from the Blade of Darkness. It's been doing a good enough job. Alamancy is my best void coin generator. Reaping Sun. Ah. Jeez, man. I guess Null and Void would probably be the one. You do like this. Let's try this. With the energy potion brewed up, that's going to make a big difference in terms of making it playable. Yeah, I don't know. The last... Un I like the Unleashes, too, though, man. You know, I like being able to discard for value, and they do get up to reasonable amounts of damage, right? Null and Void kind of has the same thing, but it doesn't have the discard synergy. It has... It sifts instead, which sifting is good. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is better, huh? Maybe that is better. The more Void Coin heavy we're going, the more sifting matters. And we do, of course, have Dragon Scale, which we only have every other turn from the spell. Yeah, okay, okay, we'll try it this way. This might be better. Alright. This will be a, a good little test before we go into the final battle. Notably, we do not have Stealth this time, but we will against the Void. We just drew Haunted Familiar, huh? Okay. So it's just barely enough energy here. I get to keep the ice wall for next turn. 20 delay block. That's the other thing. Uh, all that delay block is going to be useless from playing powers versus the void because we'll have stealth. So we need to think about that as well. But I'm much more concerned in just getting the powers out quickly versus void than I am about min-maxing my block value. Right? We just want to scale up and hit hard fast. We don't... We don't need to worry about the block as much. Okay, uh, probably a good turn to sift something. Dead Rights is not doing anything here, so goodbye, I guess. This is good block and a coin. Not going to say no to that. Uh, I think I just want a Void Kiss. Yeah, I want a Void Kiss here. So let's take... Mm, yeah, yeah, Void Kiss. 
So now the compost is ready to go. We go flesh and blood purge. Flesh and blood purge. Void kiss. We're just going straight for the queen. No thoughts given to the little ones. Unleash is too small to matter here. Do I hold the deliver? Actually, yes. I actually do hold the deliver for once. Twenty-three corruption on turn two is not bad. It's not great though. Okay, we got our allomancy. It really stinks that uh, we don't have our death strike. Last card, unshackle. And the only way to get it is off a of sift now. So, oh but, no, but we're haunted, so we we don't draw off the shed. Ugh. Fine, fine. We'll go reap and sow first. Dragon scale gives us our unshackle. Play the Unshackle, then we can Allomancy. Uh, oh wait, I'm a fool. We did not actually deal damage. That's right, it doesn't work when they have block. I was like second guessing myself, but I, uh, I went through with it anyway. Uh, Tower Shield will just run out there. 45 next turn is a pretty decent amount. I guess I'll continue to hold this Deliver. Evil will have no liver when we're done with them. Didn't gain that much corruption that turn, but at least we got our last power in. Okay. Here we need... Do we even want the dead to rights? I think it's too early. I think it's too early. We probably just want good old Ice Wall. But Ice Wall is an Expel card, so we can't get it off of Scale. We have to get it off of Compost. Which means maybe that we Reap and Sow for uh, the Void Kiss off of the Dragon Scale here, and then we'll just discard this coin. Okay, Unshackle. So now the Compost is ready to go. So we'll send the Ice Wall, get the Ice Wall, Purge the ice wall. And then I guess... Probably collection plate. Collection plate's pretty good here. Let's go for... Hmm. Whether or not we draw the diversion off the void case here actually kind of makes a big difference. I guess I'll just throw it out. We did not. Okay, well, that's alright. That's alright. We accounted for that. Purge the flesh and blood. We'll just play the wreath. Okay, this has gone really slowly, but we're finally at a pretty good amount of corruption. We've also got, uh, again, the fact that we're going to have stealth versus the void. That'll, that'll speed things up, so... I'm not, like, super worried, but this isn't the best showing for us, I will say. Okay, uh, here... We don't have anything to sift off the passage payment. No void coins. Which means that we're going to take some damage? Yeah, I don't think there's any way around this, huh? We are simply going to take damage. We might as well go void coin for diversion here, right? Get the seven block. Oh, wait, no, actually, this is enough. Yeah, this, this gets us down to just enough. Now the membrane kicks in. I will probably be playing payment anyway, or will I? Would I rather do Alamancy? I'd rather do Alamancy. I can do both. And yeah, we'll do both. 57 corruption now. Membrane continuing to be wonderful. A lot of damage on this stack, though. A lot of damage. Ooh, okay, but we've got, uh, unsh- Oh, no, but we're haunted. The Blackstone, we kind of need that. Yeah, we kind of need that. Damn, dude, this sucks. This is brutal. And we don't even have any, uh, afflictions to send off the dead to rights. Jeez. How big is the separated? 171. 
So, okay, let's do a little bit of math here. If we did a full unshackle here, we get 25% rage. The death strike we could use to get... Yeah, so we would, we would use the spell to send Reap and Sow, which gives us a copy with Dragon Scale. And then we could manipulate Compost Heap to use Reap and Sow to get Separated Soul? I think? Oh, what a, what a mess this is all of a sudden. Unshackle. Spell. Reap and sow. Reap and soul. Oh, wait, no, no, I, I didn't purge. Whoops. <laughs> I didn't purge to get the compost heap going there. That's fine. There's a reason I did things in the order I did them in, and that's because now I can, uh, I can just double ice wall, or I mean, I can just play the ice wall, rather. Uh, or I could, I could do double flesh and blood, actually, couldn't I? That's four, one, two, three. Yeah, actually, we can just do double flesh and blood this way. Yeah, we're fine. There, there were a number of ways that we could have done that turn. Got there in the end. Okay, yeah, things get complicated with daughter. And we got a green stone for good ma- I mean, excuse me, a yellow stone. I'm colorblind, apparently. I can't count, I can't read, and I'm colorblind. <laughs> things I have learned about myself while playing Vault of the Void. Let's put it on collection plate. 12 block now for one cost. That's pretty good. Okay. Uh, no, we want that in the brew, and we want rage in the belt. And we could put in a shed, but it's probably not necessary. And I don't know what I would cut for it. So I th think this is the deck. I think it's just this. I could cut the wreath, I guess, for a shed. That would be the last consideration, I think. Cut wreath, go shed. Yeah, what the hell. It's the the cultist ward that pushes me over the edge here, I think, to making that the right play. Thinner deck. More consistent block. We miss out on a single influx, uh, a single use to void coin injection. Okay, uh, spell is just gonna be curse. We got our potions. We're ready to go. Final boss time. Let's do it. All right, these guys are nice and softened up already, courtesy of the uh, blessing of erosion. We got a couple of powers already. Try and see about getting the compost to give us haunted familiar. We need a lot of energy. Grab Haunted Familiar. Play this to draw a card. Play this. Purge. Purge. There. Okay. All of the most important buffs are down. We got one shed left, randomly. Doesn't matter that much. All of the delay block goes to waste. But it's fine. We accounted for this. There's the last shed. Double unshackle. Uh, we're just purging stuff here. Make sure we compost on the flesh and blood. Uh, it's 20. Ooh, that's that's not bad damage. That is not bad damage. Um, so these guys alternate. One of them adds a garbage card and the other one attacks. So we know next turn that this guy will add garbage and this guy will attack. So if I think I can kill this dude next turn, I should target him to dodge the garbage card. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen, like, at all. So, it's probably better to go after this guy. Yeah. Whittle him down a little bit there. Whew, okay, okay. Add a death strike for now. We're gaining corruption off the garbage cards at the very least with our doomed descent. Okay, we'll purge the ice wall here. Dead to rights uh, could get stuff going for us. Hmm. In fact, if we spell, send the garbage card. Could reap. 
And this time we need... No, no, this is... Yeah, this is goofy. This is goofy. We're just gonna gain more corruption. I don't need to be worrying about vulnerable right now. Its time will come, the dead to rights. Your time will come, but that time is not now. How big is this right now? 48. Okay. Get a little bit of rage. 64. Still not quite enough. I really wish I had one extra energy to get an Alamancy in, but if I want to kill him, this is the way to do it. It doesn't quite kill him. I guess I should have targeted him after all. My assessment was inaccurate. And that's like pretty significant overkill, but that's just how Death Strike works. Your damage steps up by a very large amount. I will still take him out, I think, here. Yeah. It's probably right. Okay, one minion down. We've only got, like, three cards, right? Or is it two? Yeah, it's only two, actually, because of the stealth, even though it's turn three. We skipped our first turn. Uh, hmm. This hand does not do very much. Dang, man. Yeah, that's a bit upsetting. Just do what little we can. This doesn't even actually damage him, so we might as well hit the void instead, I guess. 33 damage. It could matter. You never know. There's the third garbage card. Hopefully we can kill him in the next two turns to avoid another one. Okay, we've got Unshackle, we've got Reap. We've got Passage. Why don't we start with Passage? What do we want to ditch? I guess we don't need Ice Wall here. Okay, Compost is ready to go. So if we send something with our spell here, we get a real and a volatile copy. Do I want flesh and blood? Probably. Let's go flesh and blood. So now we can go for the double unshackle here. Oh yeah, look at that damage. That's juicy. And then it ghosts because the volatile copy had its own black stone. So at this point, we'll purge that. It's four energy for both of these if we go up to six. You know what? I think this is actually going to be the rage turn. Because we can play this, this, and the ghosted copy, and that's like a lot. That is a lot of damage, right? Because we just need six energy, which we have already. We can't play this one, sadly, but... 138, I mean, yeah, this, this is going to be pretty good. 253, 253, 253. He's half dead. Okay, Separated Soul we definitely can't play here. Uh, in fact, we can't do anything. We can play a single Unleash. Because I could gain some uh, Overcharge, but that's not worth it. We're gaining free Overcharge from our Blessing anyway, so we're just going to purge down everything. I don't even care about keeping the tower shield to, like, block this threat. We have all this health for a reason. You know, we don't need it for anything after this, so I will happily take damage if it means accelerating the kill. Okay, this is quite the hand here, but we can get him vulnerable, so that's really good. Some that, some that. Flesh and blood is back. Uh, we want to gain... Death Strike. So I will take an Unshackle. And I will play the Unshackle. And I will play the other Unshackle. And we now have Death Strike, so the Flesh and Blood goes off twice. And then one more use. GG! Solid kill there. First try on the Corruption Daughter I-50. Always a tough class, but GG. Excellent run. Look at all those perfects, man. We even, we even saying, oh, I don't care about my health. We perfected the void anyway. Very, very nice. Did not get to see the special dog void stone yet again. It's just so dang hard to find. But uh, compost was amazing. Uh, dragon scale was super crazy. Liquid membrane was awesome. 
the nip of drinking alcohol at the end was pretty sweet too. Got to use a lot of powers here. Very fun. Really cool run, man. I enjoyed that a lot. Thank you to all of the raiders from Pegrax's channel who joined in. If y'all like what you saw here, definitely drop a follow. We stream Max Difficulty Void somewhat regularly. As far as I know, I'm like literally the only one who streams this game at Max Difficulty. So, yeah, definitely either, you know, drop a follow here.